to Bay take on the Cleveland Cavaliers on the road. And if they win, they clinch a spot in the NBA playoffs. Tip off tonight at 730. You can hear the game live over on our sister station, 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. Traffic on the fives, Matt Bear. Yeah, Kerr, looking at northbound 65, 70 stop and go traffic from Michigan Street into the north. Split delay continues out to Meridian Penn and on the east side, northbound 465 slows at East 56th Street. Traffic sponsored by Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield. They've teamed up with the Indiana Fever and Common Threads to provide local schools with information for nutritious meal preparation. Learn more at anthem.com slash fever. Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is the trade name of Anthem Insurance Companies Incorporated. I'm Matt Bear with uh, Traffic on the Fives. Follow us at WIBC Traffic. At Uline, they know firsthand the road to success is an uphill climb. Uline started in the family basement and through hard work is now North America's most trusted shipping and industrial supplier. They get what it means to have the support of reliable, hardworking partners. So they keep 41,000 items ready to ship. Whether your company is still in a basement office or expanding cross-country, Uline will be there on your road to success. Visit Uline.com. Are you struggling with anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues, but feel like you have to keep it together to tell everyone, I'm fine? Hi, this is Pastor Micah Beckwith from Life Church, and we want you to know you're not alone. Starting April 7th, we're launching a new five-week series called I'm Not Fine to bring awareness and understanding to mental illness. Through powerful stories, biblical teaching, and community support, we'll explore what it means to honestly face our struggles and find healing. Join us this Sunday as we kick off I'm Not Fine and start breaking down the stigmas together. Go to LifeChurchIN.com for our service times and locations. It's not about being fine. It's about finding life. We'll see you this week. The forecast from the American Standard Cooling Weather Center. Cloudy skies, breezy and cooler with a few spotty showers today. A high of 58 tonight. Decreasing clouds, quiet and cool. A low down to 42. I'm Wish TV Storm Track 8 meteorologist Marcus Bailey for 93 WIBC. A long line of showers all over central Indiana. It's 47 downtown. I'm Kirk Darling on the level on the go and on WIBC.com. <laughs> You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. It is, uh, well, it's not a beautiful day outside, but it's a beautiful day in our hearts. And let's, have, let's try to have a show that corresponds with that. It is the Kendall and Casey Show. I'm Rob. Casey's out today. Our old pal, Brad Kloffenstein, Stein in for Casey today. Brad, hello. Rob, glad to be back. I was just walking around the circle, and somebody set, pulled out the shepherd's hook and pulled me in and said, hey, <laughs> come on. Like kind of a, what is it, a Groucho Marx movie? Yeah, or exactly. Or Arpo or there whichever. I was, minding my own business, Rob. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, we do have to get to this event we had last night, which was amazing. And uh, look, the dynamic of the Indiana Republican Party is it, just incredible right now. And it is by far the most entertaining thing going on in Indiana politics and government. But first, two things. One, as we came on the air today, you were actually reading a letter from uh, an inmate at a local correctional facility who is a big fan of the show. Uh, yes, this is from Newcastle Correctional Facility, Newcastle. Okay, Indiana. so this is interesting because normally we get correspondence from our, our pals at the Plainfield facility. This is from Newcastle, so it is good to know that Kendall and Casey have avid listeners all in, in correctional facilities all across the, uh, the the greater central Indiana area. The bigger question is, does this count in the ratings? I, I don't know if that guy has a, what do they call that, a meter or not. I don't know. I don't know if they're eligible for those. <laughs> I'm going to guess not, but we appreciate all our listeners the same. Maybe we'll get into that letter here in a little bit. The other thing, and Casey and I got into this yesterday, a little bit about the traffic driving in and how people seemingly forget how to drive in the rain or the snow when it happens, like it hasn't happened for a while, and then it happens again. The other thing, have you noticed, and Casey and I talked about this, the flooding? It seems yes. like there's more flooding on the roadways than there used to be. Well, I think that has more to do with the four to five inches of rain we've received in the last three or four days. Is it? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's just the sheer volume of liquid. Because we got a call about this during the voicemail segment, maybe we'll play it, about whether the actual, const so much construction is actually contributing to the flooding in question whether the amount of road construction that seems to be going on is actually creating more flooding 
Yeah, that can't be a thing, can I, it? In construction zones, it probably is a thing because they, they have to rip out all the old drainage and they're in the process of installing new drainage. So, yeah, there's no drainage infrastructure there at the moment. Because, my goodness, between the flooding and the people who just seemingly forget how to drive, what is normally a 30-minute excursion, it takes 45 minutes to get to work, Brad. So when I was coming back from the airport on Wednesday night, uh, it was raining fairly hard and it was 45 miles an hour from the west side over to the fabulous northeast side of Lawrence. So, uh, but some of it is our roads, our markings don't show up in the rain. Uh, like if you go down, you know, south, great point. southern states, they their reflectors work. Yes. It doesn't matter how hard it's raining. You know what lane you're in. Here in Indiana, I don't know if it's the, uh, the paint that we use yeah. or if we don't have the little raised reflectors, but, yeah, you just cannot see the lane markers. Um, here. By the way, and, and we'll get to where you went and what you did next segment, but you were on an airplane. I was. In inclement weather. Yes. Do you get exceptionally nervous when you're on an airplane in inclement weather? Because driving in inclement weather is hassle enough. I can't imagine being on an airplane in inclement weather. I don't. Um, we did have an announcement that hey, it might get rough. If, oh, geez. If, if you're one who has a you know gets a little queasy, now oh, might be the time no. to take the Dramamine or something, and then it never really got rough. Oh, jeez. All right, it's Kendall Casey show. Brad's in for Casey today. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of the show. Enough with the niceties and uh, and other shenanigans and frivolities. So who are we going to tick off today, Rob? <laughs> Haven't you heard, Brad? We've turned a new positive direction on this show. <laughs> well, yeah, we're, we're going to be very positive that we're going to make somebody upset. All right, so last night, Casey and I went. And by the way, Casey's fine. I think she just was very worn out from all the autographs she was signing last night. She'll be back Monday. Um, Casey and I went and did the Front Porch Patriots event at a beautiful home on North Meridian Street uh, here in Indianapolis. By the way, Brandon, you are an Indianapolis historian. You love the city. Some of the most gorgeous homes in the entire state are located on North Meridian Street. Oh, they are. They are. That's always been a dream of mine. You know you've made it if you live on North Meridian. I mean, and my goodness, like, yes, okay, so this is the thing you weigh, right? You're on a very crowded stretch of road where there are cars whipping past, sometimes at a relatively high rate of speed, at various points throughout the day. However, However, the homes are far enough off the road that I don't feel like there's any imminent danger. Most of them have, like, the wrought iron gates that surround them. And, man, you talk about, like, turn-of-the-century homes that have maintained their beauty and the people who own them, even if I don't always agree with all of their politics on that little stretch of, of uh, Indianapolis roadway. They have done a phenomenal – that is one of the most gorgeous sections in the entire state of Indiana. It is. Yeah, yeah no. And even – yeah, really from Butler over to College Avenue – north of about 42nd street just so, so casey and i went last night the front porch patriots had uh this event for micah beckwith who's running for lieutenant governor it was packed it was so great to meet so many wibc listeners i would say uh, over 100 people in this home now brad can you imagine even these nice fairly uh fairly large homes that are located on north meridian street a hundred p hundred ish people in a house unbelievable uh packed in there like sardines but it was Awesome to meet so many WIBC listeners. Where did they park all those people? Uh, there were side streets. <laughs> there were maybe uh, manufactured parking. They figured out a way to get it done. And here's what's interesting about this. Like I said, they had over 100 people. Many of these people are actually running for convention delegate. Some of them were there to try to figure out how to influence people who are running for con convention delegate. And obviously, as we have laid out, Micah Beck with running for lieutenant governor, that will not be decided on your primary ballot. You don't vote right. for lieutenant governor. State convention delegates, who you do vote for on your primary ballot, are the ones who at the state convention in June will decide who the lieutenant governor is going to be. And so Casey and I were there. I did the intro for Micah. And what is really interesting about the Republican Party now, Brad, and you totally saw it last night, and you know, you're talking to WIBC listeners, you realize there is just this huge fracture inside the Republican Party now. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, this state party is totally divided. And what you realize is there's a group of people who get what the Republican Party is supposed to be. The, you, there's a group of people who get that they believe in the platform of the Republican Party. And they're honked off, Brad, because the Republican Party, the power structure, the establishment, has time and again strayed from the values and self-professed beliefs of the Republican Party. If you could remind our listeners, what are those beliefs? Uh, they're supposed to be the party of low taxes and limited government. Oh. I, however, <laughs> and I said this last night, when a party has grown its state budget 
by $7 billion or something like 37.5% over the past seven years and has raised taxes time and time and time again. I think a lot of people are looking around going, you might not be living up to the values you've expressed in your party platform. Huh, Rob, I, you're just some wide-eyed dreamer. <laughs> Just crazy talk coming from across the desk here. So this is, but this, you realize this is the Beckwith thing. The Beckwith election, the lieutenant governor's race is going to be the most important and entertaining thing that is going to happen in Indiana politics and government this year. The Republican state convention is sort of like the battleground because there is this huge division inside the Republican party. And it's going to be interesting whether the base who has now been kind of totally ignored and taken for granted by the Republicans over the past several election cycles, whether they are mad enough and can get enough of these delegates elected to strike back. Because I'll tell you what, last night, you saw 100 really honked off people there. And Brad, you know, in a political event, if you can get nine people oh, at one yeah. of these things, it's incredible. I think as weird as this sounds, he can actually win. I, I would think so, because you got to figure the people who come out for a primary are pretty much dedicated party people anyhow. Yeah. But then this is even a more dedicated subset of the of the primary voters. So, yes, yeah, so it's going to be the hardcore people. So let me ask your, your thoughts. Yeah. Should a governor be allowed to pick his lieutenant governor nominee? Well, I and Mike was talking about this last night. There's a reason the people who kind of put together the um, – actually, it was our host who was talking about this. There's a reason when the people who put together the Indiana Constitution set this up in a manner, set up our laws, set it up so that this lieutenant governor is not actually picked by the governor. It's not actually – I mean, oftentimes it is, right. but it's not just – somebody can fight back on that. And I think what the reason is, um, you're seeing it play out now. There is no independent voice in the Republican Party. You look at these candidates for governor – and they all sound, for the most part, exactly the same. The only two who sound any different are Hill and Rittenauer, and they have no money, so they have no shot. The power structure, the donor and lobbyist crowd, has picked what they want. And the donors and lobbyists do not have the same interests as you as a regular person. So if you look at Crouch, what? and you look at Chambers, and you look at Doden, and you look at Braun, they may have some minuscule differences, but largely they sound exactly the same. And sounding exactly the same, Brad, means they don't tell you much of anything because they don't want to be able to be held accountable. This conversation reminds me, I've started my own primary TV commercial, radio <laughs> commercial bingo card <laughs> with all these buzzwords, and I should have brought it today because they all are saying virtually the same things. Well, and I love, I mean, Brad Chambers is sending me mail almost on a daily basis, and I just think every time I get a mailer from him, how much rich Republican money I'm wasting every time I get that that mailer. And look, this is so this is what it's all about. You're whether it's Braun, whether it's Chambers, whether it's Doden, whether it's Crouch, and there are some differences between them but not a lot. None of those four are actually going to fight for you. There's nothing in their track record that shows they are fighters for you. With Braun, it's the tax increases. He voted for all the tax increases and in growth in government in the General Assembly. Crouch obviously was Holka, a, you know, a huge Holcomb cheerleader and supporter and totally silent on all of these things. She can't take that back. Brad Chambers gave the guy an A in the debate, so he's a total you know, Holcomb homer. And you got Doden, who you can't, in most cases, get a clear idea I mean, he deferred on giving Holcomb a grade in the debate, so that tells you how little he wants to stick his neck out. So I think people are starting to wise up and realize we got to pick one of these people, but and one of these people is going to be our governor, our, our nominee for governor, but we don't really trust any of them, and they don't have the track record where you say, boy, they're really reliably conservative, so you have to have somebody in that lieutenant governor's position who's going to be a check and balance on the governor. I wonder if any of these candidates for governor – have really thought about the prospect that they might not get their lieutenant governor pick. I, I, it, it, they've got to be terrified. Well, and this is the thing, and this, and you and I were chuckling about this before the show. Even if you don't necessarily agree with Micah Beckwith on everything, from the sheer entertainment standpoint, I mean, think about having four years of being able to talk in the media about how you have a lieutenant. Now, look, he's going to probably agree with the governor on a whole bunch of stuff. But on the key stuff, when these when the Republicans get squirrely, which they have, Brad, every single year, on taxes and government, taxes and growth of government, the Republicans have gotten squirrely every single year. 
Won't it be beyond entertaining to have a lieutenant governor who is at odds with the governor and the party in question? I mean, my goodness, if for no other reason as a delegate, I would vote for him just because of that. The, the, for, coming from a guy who's lived his life mostly on whether or not this is going to provide for a good story later on, <laughs> I completely like, I love this. I, I love the fact that Beckwith is willing to, to mix it up. All right. Idea. So we, it was so great to meet so many of you last night. The WIBC audience is awesome, and we love you guys, and thanks for coming out to that event last night. All right, let's take a break. Brad, you got to do something earlier this week that was a field of dreams type of moment and experience for so many people, and... I want to ask you when we come, I wanted you to talk about it and then kind of get your perspective on what it's like to do something that you kind of thought was unimaginable. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, and this this goes back to my previous comment about living my life for a good story. This is a good story. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Coming up next, Kendall and Casey Show, 93 WIBC. Like magic, it appears in the sky. A rainbow. Somewhere, Somewhere over that rainbow lurks not bluebirds or dreams hidden behind that beauty is trouble get a cone tornado over there don't be fooled tornado on the ground confirmed tornado on the ground confirmed tornadoes oh my gosh look at it oh my god this spring depend on your severe weather station baseball size hill 93 wibc Hey guys, it's Rob from my friends at WeGrowHairIndia.com and you know it is spring and that means the grass is growing and something else that might be growing on the top of your head is more hair if you call my friends at we Grow Hair Indy. You know, I am proof of this. Three and a half years ago I went to we Grow Hair Indy and they just did a phenomenal job. And the great thing about uh, when you go visit my friends at we Grow Hair Indy, uh, they're not going to put any pressure on you. They're, they're going to do a totally free, no hassle, no obligation consultation. They're going to take a look at what's going on with you, and then they're going to give you some options. And you make the choice. You decide how you want to go forward. I know that's exactly what happened to me, and I'm so glad that I did. Because here we are, three and a half years later, love every time I look in the mirror, and I know a big part of that is my friends at We Grow Hair Indy. 317-522-2995, 317-522-2995. Or head over to WeGrowHairIndy.com. WeGrowHairIndy.com. Tell them Rob sent you. Liberals have quit on America. We have a secure border. They'll deny it while they throw away the America we built together. I'm telling the American people that we're going to get control of inflation. It's no accident they let Indianapolis burn. Or why our border overflows. Jefferson Shreve? He fights back. He's conservative, pro-police, strong border. So he gets hit like this. Jefferson Shreve, Trump-style politics trashing our city. And what's more, Shreve takes no lobbyist money, owes no one, and can't be bought. So to them, Shreve is the enemy. Defend our country from the left, the elites, the ones who've been bought and sold. Defend it with a fighter who can't be bought. For law, order, and a secure border. He's Jefferson Shreve for Congress. I'm Jefferson Shreve, and I approve this message. Paid for by Shreve for Congress. Raju, Raju, shades of red, white, and blue. Guarding dreams for all, he believes in you. Raju Chinthala is a healthcare professional, a successful businessman, and a community leader with experience. Raju is ready to be your next congressman in the 5th District. Raju for you. Raju, Raju, shades of red, white, and blue. Raju is a family man ready to represent your family with Hoosier values. And he's a man of action, ready to get things done. Vote for Raju Chinthala, Republican 5th District Congress. Raju, Raju, shades of red, White and blue, guarding dreams for all, he believes in you. I'm Raju Chintala, and I approve this message. Paid for by Raju for Congress. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. 
Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. What if the next time you painted your home was the last time you painted your home? Our home has had Rhino Shield for 10 years. Rhino Shield. Call 888-RHINO-41. Don't paint, don't vinyl. Go Rhino. Indy's leader in patio installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndyDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndyDecorativeConcrete.com. Little Todd Rundgren. Yeah, I like it. Kendall and Casey Show. 93 WIBC. I'm Rob. Casey's out today. Our old pal Kloffenstein. Brad Kloffenstein, head of the Greater Lawrence Chamber of Commerce. Hashtag why I love Lawrence. Uh, in the studio today. And uh, so you got to live out uh, kind of a field of dreams moment for you, Brad. Many people may not know you went to Purdue University. I did. I'm a, I'm a proud alumni. You have a diploma on your wall. And I love this for you because you are what I like to call, Brad, an events man. Like yes. you like to go to things. You like to be around people. You have lived one of the happiest, most charmed lives of any any person I know. I have. I have. It's yes. why you're always smiling. Exactly, because I, I do cool stuff, and I will seek out good stories and good opportunities. So you got to go to the national championship game featuring the Purdue Boilermakers on Monday night. I did. When the game ended Saturday night, uh, when they beat North Carolina State, it was the furthest thing from my mind right. that I would ever possibly be in Phoenix watching this game. Yeah, so tell us what happened because you you got uh, pretty good seats. You were asked to go to the event. Uh, tell us what happened. Okay, so let me set the stage. So Saturday night, my dad and stepmom drove up from um, Newburgh down by Evansville. They are at my house. My daughter, son-in-law, and granddaughter were there. We all watched the game. We stayed up. We played board games. We had several adult beverages. Um, I'm... Just, me and my wife are going to bed. It's about 1 in the morning. I'm just kind of flipping through Facebook real quick, and suddenly I get a, a message, messenger, from one of my – a friend of mine that grew up in my neighborhood. We graduated the same class from Mount Vernon High School. Uh, I haven't seen this guy in 35 years. Wow. Pat, so it's not like some longtime friend that you've been running around with or – Pat Bennett is his name. He – after high school, he went to Lipscomb. You know, I think it was Lipscomb College. Now you at Lipscomb University down in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. And he has stayed down in Nashville. I get this message from him saying, hey, I'm good friends with the Lipscomb athletic director, and we're out in Phoenix. We've suddenly had two tickets come available for the national championship game. What? And we've got two nights of hostel, hotel <laughs> stay. So Sunday night and Monday night, he goes, it's all free. You just have to get here. So wait a second. So like some sort of angel from above, this guy who you have really not had any interaction with for 35 years just suddenly goes, hey, two tickets on the horizon to the national championship game plus your hotel yes. if you'd like to go. Now, this is usually how the sex trafficking stories start. <laughs> I was going to say, like, are you suddenly worried I'm going to wake up in a bathtub without a kidney? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, no way. And my wife's like, so I told her what's going on. And she's like, can you really trust this guy? I'm like, listen, there's a, most people in my life, I'd be like, no, this could be a scam or something, something. This guy is as up and up as they come. I go, this is legit. And I love this. And so I start looking for uh, for flights real quick, and they were all like 1200 bucks. They, they weren't great. And my wife says, hey, I'm looking at Google Flights, which I never even knew that there was a Google Flights. She goes, there's one on here, round trip for like four hundred dollars. Wow! And, I, and she goes, then we started looking, and, 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 sure the to, and the plane had wings. Plane had <laughs> wings, so it was an eight a.m. flight that day. So mind you, this is like 1.30, 1.45 in the morning, middle of the night. We've got house guests; they're all in yeah. bed, and I book a flight that leaves at eight a.m. So, I love that. So at five forty-five. We jump in the car, and she drives me to the airport. When she gets home, everybody, else, all her house gets to get up, and they're like, where's Brad? Sheila goes, I love oh, this. he's on a plane to Phoenix. And kudos to Sheila, your wife, who didn't throw a fit. She wasn't like, hey, our family's here. You can't leave. She was like, you got to go, Brad. Yes, which, now, my dad is a big Purdue guy. Mind you, he was in my house at the time. I did wake him up in the middle of the night. I'm like, come on, let's go. <laughs> I don't know. 
So you went with your dad? No, no, no. He he bailed on. He he didn't. <laughs> he said no. So at the time when I left, it was just me. I had a room, two tickets. I'm like, I know a bunch of people in Phoenix. If nothing else, I'll invite yeah one of the locals. So I'm on a plane at 8 a.m. I land in Phoenix. I had a little layover in Salt Lake City, so I got to enjoy Salt Lake City for a couple hours. Yeah, and then I'm in Phoenix. Early so, afternoon. So this would have been, was this Monday? S this is Sunday. Sunday. So you spent the day in Phoenix. Spent the, that day in Phoenix. So got in, saw my friend that I hadn't seen in 30 plus years. Thanks for the tickets. Thanks for the tickets. <laughs> went up, took a little nap. I went to dinner that night with him, his son, and the athletic director from Lipscomb University. <laughs> and I'm asking the story. I'm like, okay, this is surreal right now. Right. I'm like, this, you know, the Grateful Dead, they would call this a miracle ticket, but this is better than any miracle ticket. You're like, is Ash and Kutcher going to pop out at some point and tell right, me I'm Right, exactly. I'm going to be punked. Yeah. So, but, uh, so it turns out that every NCAA university is allowed to request tickets to the national championship game. I think they have to pay a little something yeah. for them. So you can request a, like up to 20. But the way this goes is they'll give you like two down low and then they'll give you like four in the club level that's got some hospitality. And then they'll give you like Jeez. the other 10 or 12 up in the rafters. I, so you got to take in the game. I know it didn't go the way you wanted, but right. what an experience. Oh, my gosh. It, so I ended up getting the two tickets that were down low. So I was, you like got the close the, seats. I was off the corner, maybe 25 rows up. And then, uh, so I got a hold of a buddy. So I asked like two or three people. They said, no, got a hold of one buddy that I go to games with sometimes. I'm like, hey, can you get to Phoenix? I've got two tickets for the game. He's like, no way. He goes, I'm already in Phoenix with my family on spring break. I had no, he goes, I didn't think I was going to get to the game. I'm in. I love that. That's what a great story. All right, uh, let's take a break. When we come back, Brad, bad news. Oh, There's no. a new uh, study out that says over the course of your life, you will pay 524 hundred thousand i'm sorry five hundred and twenty four thousand dollars five hundred twenty four thousand dollars in taxes i feel like i paid that just this year uh yeah we'll talk about it coming up next kendall casey show 93 wibc for the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time there's granger Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. 93 WIPC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. Another plan on top of the other. Showers all over radar. It's 47 downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at 930. President Biden proposing one plan to wipe away student loans for millions of Americans, but now is rolling out another. Fox's Jared Halper. Nearly $7.5 billion in student loan debt for 277,000 Americans will be canceled as part of income-driven repayment and public service loan forgiveness plans. The announcement comes days after President Biden rolled out another sweeping debt forgiveness plan that aims to cancel debt for more than 30 million Americans. At the White House, Jared Halpern, Fox News. Vice President Kamala Harris is headed to Arizona today after the state Supreme Court there upheld a near total ban on abortions that was put in place 160 years ago. She'll be in Tucson for an event focusing on abortion and the Biden administration's efforts to keep abortion legal. Another day of rain, which means more problems with flooding. A lot of the creeks and streams are what's causing the big problems with some of these these streets that have been shut down. Wish TV meteorologist Marcus Bailey, who says this is now the wettest start to the month of April on record. Your opening bell report on 93 WYBC brought to you by Absolute Wealth Management LLC. Another bad start to the day. The Dow is off 256 to 38,476. The S&P 500 is down 40 to 5,202. And the NASDAQ is down 183 to 18,302. I'm Kirk Darling on the level, on the go, and on WYBC.com. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Indy West. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors so come celebrate on thursday april 18th at 5115 west washington street in indianapolis from 10 a.m to 1 p.m enjoy food music and more at this free community event plus tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team for details call 317-754-7291 or visit meetcenterwellindiana.com 
It's the first day of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a laid back Sunday afternoon, you wish would never end. The homemade taste of Bluebell, and good friends gathered round. The good old days are being made right now. St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream. A cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days are being made. Look for Bluebell ice cream at your local grocer and pick up your favorite flavor today. Hello, listener land. It is Rob from my friends at the Bath Authority. And you know the Bath Authority does it all from walking tubs to replacement showers, tub to shower conversions, and more. So if you've been looking around at your house going, man, I've got to upgrade this totally out-of-date bathroom, the Bath Authority is the place for you. Now, what you get with the Bath Authority is the highest quality bathroom remodeling products, along with a world-class customer experience. And what that means to you, and that's what's most important, is it'll be low maintenance, resistant to mold and mildew, easy to clean, and last for decades. And right now, if you call 317-532-5711, that's 317-532-5711, and you schedule a totally free in-home estimate, you're going to get $1,000 off a new shower or bath. Plus, 36 months of interest-free financing. That's right. Schedule your totally free, no-obligation in-home estimate today at 317-532-5711, and you're going to get $1,000 off a new shower bath plus 36 months of interest-free financing. TheBathAuthority.com. TheBathAuthority.com. Tell them Rob sent you. It pays to be early because at Cracker Barrel, you can get early dinner deals weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. That includes their signature meatloaf, homestyle chicken, and more starting at just $8.99. So make tonight an early dinner night at Cracker Barrel. We'll see you there. Get ready for storm season because you know as well as I do, storms in Indiana can be fierce and they can come out of nowhere. So don't wait for a leak to have your roof inspected. Have peace of mind about your roof being able to handle any storm. Moss Roofing, M-O-S-S, mossroofing.com provides free inspections and can spot potential issues before they turn into costly repairs. Whether you're looking for a siding replacement after a strong wind or a roof replacement after a hailstorm, Moss Roofing has options that fit any budget just ask moss roofing about their payment plans no matter your situation moss roofing has you covered with a job done right every shingle time i love that that's very funny contact moss roofing today 317-747-3665 317-747-3665 tell them tony cat sent you moss roofing 747-3665 or online at moss m-o-s-s mossroofing.com you're listening to the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. Looking out at the road, rushing under my wheel. Jordan Speed took a nine on number 15, Looking Kev. This is the most pain, or Kev, Kev, Brad, this is the most painful thing I've ever seen. I noticed you were kind of distracted over there. I mean, I didn't even bet on the guy, and I'm like, I'm feeling horrible for him. I mean, this is why the Masters is just unbelievable. So how did how did this horrible fate uh, befall he was doing, him? He was doing fine. By the way, it's Kendall and Casey show. I'm Rob. Uh, Brad Kloppenstein signed in for Casey today. Uh, it is day two of the Masters. For some guys finishing up day one. Uh, Jordan Spieth is one of the best golfers in the world. He was doing fine. And now he took a nine on number 15, which is a par five. He was doing fine until really it was the fourth shot. He chipped the ball into the water. Usually if you can get within 30 feet of the green, you're okay. I mean, he, uh, this is just, I'm watching it. And do you ever, like, you see a train wreck? I've never seen a train wreck happen in real time. This must be what it looks like. Yeah. Who was, somebody chucked their club into Lake Michigan <laughs> when they're playing up at Kohler here a couple of years ago. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I saw this number, Brad, and uh, it was just unbelievable that the average, uh, the average American, it says, pays a shocking $524,625 in their lifetime in taxes. That's the average. 
That's so the average. Some people pay more. Some some regions pay more. Some people pay a lot more. So, for example, New Jersey, nine hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. One hundred nine hundred eighty-seven nine hundred eighty-seven one hundred and seventeen. Let me try yes. that again. Nine hundred eighty-seven thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars. Gosh darn it, Brad! That took me four tries, but I got it right. Nine hundred eighty-seven thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars. Next time I go out to New Jersey, I'm going to take a foam finger, say we're number one. <laughs> I, that is unbelievable. That's almost a million dollars in taxes, just in taxes in your life. So that yeah, it's almost double the average. Uh, Washington D.C. comes in second at eight hundred eighty-four thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars. Connecticut and Massachusetts third and fourth. Uh, and by the way, this story over at USA Today at eight hundred and fifty-five thousand three hundred and seven dollars. So all these obviously kind of northeastern area states have this in common. Lowest state in the mix was West Virginia at three hundred and fifty-eight thousand four hundred and seven dollars. I want to come back though to that that average. Though a five hundred and twenty four thousand dollars, more than five hundred twenty four thousand dollars in your life in taxes. And do you ever do this, Brad? Like I will stop sometimes, you know, and often it'll center around tax day where I will just simply stop and go, where does all this money go? So, well, government is easily a third of the gross domestic product. Yes. So so if you imagine everything that is produced Government consumes one third of it in one way or another. That's unbelievable. Um, that is incredible. It is. And it's a big th- I'm actually I'm a little surprised it's not higher. And you think about where, how much of a part now the government is in our economy. Like you think about how many people, what a large portion of our economy depend upon the government to earn a living. Oh, it's half. Yeah, so, gotta I mean, be half, more than when half. you factor people who work for the government, people who get benefits from the government, and people who have contracts with the government, easily, I would say no. you got to be right that it's easily a ha- half of the entire America, uh, half of the entire country depends upon the government so, for a living. And for our listeners who are d- thinking that we're we're inaccurate on this, think about where all you pay taxes. You pay sales tax, you pay income tax, uh, which in Indiana could be. I'm, shoot, I don't even know what our tax rate is in Indiana right now. I think it's like 7% or something. Yeah, sales tax is 7%. Well, sales then, tax well, but, is 7 income tax. Well, don't forget, on, the, on sales tax, though, these donut counties have two extra pennies on all the food. Right, food and beverage. Well, I used to call it the dome tax. Other but, than Morgan County. Morgan, if you live in Morgan County, you have some really smart people because they were the only donut county not stupid enough to fall for the dome f- tax. Fight the power, Morgan That's County. That's right. Yeah, good Appreciate job, you. Morgan. Go Martinsville. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got state income tax you've got federal income tax you've got uh embedded tax on anything that you buy because of the the companies that make that are paying taxes on it uh you've got gas tax you've got sales tax on gas um you've got oh property tax oh yes brad that's the and, big one and if you say i'm a renter i don't pay property tax Oh, you simpleton. <laughs> you are paying the 2% property tax. You're, you're paying more. You, actually, yes. Is that 3%? Two, well, 2%. I'm saying, but if yes. you own a home, you're paying one. A rental property, the owner of that property pays two. They're not eating that out of the goodness of their heart. No. You're no, paying that. passed along. Okay, so here's, uh, and don't forget, here's the other thing. And this is when, um, I was always floored about this when I, when the year I was the state pharmacy board director. There's all of these professions that are licensed Right. So whether you're a barber, you're a realtor, you're a pharmacist, you're a doctor, all these professions are licensed. Bartender. And all the a bartender, all the time in these professions, they force you to continually get these license renewed or you can't do the profession. And what I quickly realized that year that I worked down there, there's very little actual oversight on this. No, that they're not they're not giving you in most cases, they're not giving you a test to see if you're proficient. It is it's just, a money grab. It, it is a money grab. You have to pay them for the privilege of being able to do your job. And I remember looking at this going, what the hell are we doing here? Like, it, this was back This was back when I was still naive enough to think the Republicans actually cared about good, accountable government. And that Mike Pence, because he'd just been elected governor, was going to promote good and accountable government. And I remember being down there seeing all this stuff going on going, oh, my gosh, I've got to get to the governor's office. They probably don't know this is going on. They'll probably. It was like, remember when people used to write the letters to Stalin in the gulag? (laughs) If only Stalin knew of my terrible treatment, he would do something. And then you quickly. We have one of those letters. Yes, I was like, I was like, and you'd go to, and some some stooge lackey would cut you off because 
because you obviously couldn't go to the governor. And you'd be like, all right, I'm going to tell this guy. And he'll report this to the governor. And the governor will surely do something. And then you realize, no, they're all in on it together. Yeah. Now, Rob, did I ever tell you about my two years on the Marion County Board of Zoning Appeals? Oh, no. I, I was go appointed on. to the... I, Mind you, I was appointed yes. to this board, and people would come in, and you know, zoning is imposed on their property, and if they wanted to do something outside of the zoning plan, they would re request relief. And so it's very, very strict what the Board of Zoning Appeals has to operate off of. You guys are essentially a court. You can't just make it up as you go along. There's three or four things you can look at, and right. it has to meet those requirements. So people have to pay a fee. To, so you have to pay for a permit. If you need a, some sort of zoning relief, you yes. have to you have to pay to file for that, and yes. you have to go and have a hearing. Well, and you may get rejected, even though you have to pay the money. You still, yeah, they, you don't get a refund. Well, <laughs> one of the hearings I show up, and they are asking us as a board to approve a fee increase, a doubling of the fee increase, <laughs> and there, and you know that the the city was laying out their rationale, saying, "Well, these people use our services," and I was the one person that held my hand up. I'm like. Um, no, I'm pretty sure that we impose this on them. I'm like, we're not providing any service to them. We're requiring them to pay. And Rob, you'd be shocked by this. I was the lone no vote. Yeah. Um, so you want to hear what Indiana is? Yeah. The the fees for Indiana. So oh, t taxes. So over the um, over the life of over your lifetime in Indiana, this study and uh, Self dot Inc is the are the people who did this study. Four hundred and forty three thousand four hundred and forty three thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars. Four hundred and forty three thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars are the amount of taxes you will pay in your life if you live in the state of Indiana on average. I thought we were this super Republican state, Brad, with all these liberty and freedom loving people making the choices. And, and uh, again, full circle. Aren't we supposed to be the party of low taxes and liberty government? <laughs> <laughs> Party of kind of lower taxes then, but then compared what, to New Jersey. Massachusetts? Yeah. We're beating New Jersey. Uh, so here's the breakdown that they have on this. So of the $443,271, the tax on earnings, so income, $251,640. Tax on personal expenses, $51,892. Tax on property. This is the grossest one of all, Brad, because the government has nothing to do with you buying your home. They have nothing to do with you owning that home. That is your home. And yet over the life of your property, you will on average pay $84,608, Brad. $84,608 for the privilege the privilege of owning your so home. So you're effectively renting it from the government. Oh, and you mentioned cars, and that's a yes. big one. Oh, yeah. $55,131. Yeah, because when you buy a car, you've got to pay sales tax on it. And then every year, if you have a newer, nicer car, your license plate renewal fee is much higher than somebody that drives an old jalopy. Simply unbelievable. All right. Uh, Brad is in for Casey. When we come back, Ron DeSantis is doing something. And I'm going to ask Brad, is this noble or is this pathetic we'll talk about that coming up next kendall and casey show 93 wibc coming up on tony katz today they say iran will be attacking very very soon and what just happened with a foreign national at the border that's after the news at noon on 93 wibc universal windows direct universal windows direct if you are looking around your house and going man it is totally time to replace these out of date windows universal windows direct is the place for you and listen to this deal going on right now with universal windows direct just call 317-659-7574 again can't believe this deal is real but it totally is 317-659-7574 Every two windows you buy, you're going to get the next two free. There's no limit. Buy two, get two. Buy four, get four. Buy 20, you'll get 20. But you got to call 317-659-7574. Schedule your free in-home estimate today. And on top of that, with Universal Windows Direct, if you say, hey, Rob Kendall, the radio guy, WIBC, he told me to call, they're going to take an additional $250 off your project. UniversalWindowsDirect.com is where you can see everything for yourself. UniversalWindowsDirect.com. Tell them Rob sent you. Um, Congresswoman Sparks will be ready for your interview soon. It seems pretty intense in there. Yeah, kind of crazy. Maybe I'll take some time before the interview to Google Victoria Sparks and learn a little more about her. 
Uh, whoa. Have you seen this article? One aide calling the lawmaker's workplace behavior manic? Victoria Sparts was number one on Legistorm's list of worst bosses based on high turnover rates. Says she, quote, avoided firing aides and instead bullied them until they left. And the story is based on interviews with half a dozen former staffers. Yikes. Sparts called staff morons and idiots. I get this. Victoria Sparts says her working style is, quote, not for everyone. Well, it's not for me. I think I'll pass on this interview. I'm Chuck Goodrich. I'm running for Congress, and I approve this message. Paid for by Go With Chuck Goodrich Committee. Garage Doors of Indianapolis is everything that's right about Central Indiana. They've been locally, family-owned for 50 years, helping our local economy remain strong by employing 70 families. Garage Doors of Indianapolis is proud to do business right here in the great state of Indiana. They're a conservative-minded company that shares our values and stands by their products and services. You can call Garage Doors of Indianapolis today for service today. 875-4577, 875-4577, or visit doorstoday.com. Welcome to Tire Discounters. Oh, hiya, Phantom. Mike, you may be in big trouble with Chip Wood. Our owner? Free oil changes along with alignment? On any four-tire purchase. Michelin's up to 200 off? Yeah, sorry, Mike, but I'm telling. But the Wood family is behind all this. Oh, those rascals. But don't tell the accountants. Of course not. And what do they do again? Buy any set of four tires at Tire Discounters and get a free alignment and oil change. Make the Michelin's and save up to 200 more. Discounters. See store for details. Watch new episodes of Your Money unfold every day on Lake City Bank Digital. Binge watch your budgets, monitor payments, and set savings goals. Learn more at lakecitybank.com slash digital. Member FDIC. All right, we got to talk about this thing Ron DeSantis is doing, and I don't know if this is super noble or just kind of pathetic and brad i'm gonna leave it up to you Kloffensteinstein is in for casey today so ron DeSantis apparently uh was at some sort of retreat a political retreat of some sort and he told the people there that he is going to fundraise for donald trump i don't know why so this is my question is and, and i will leave it to you because you know you are the voice of reason Thank you, you are the voice of uh you know, the middle, you are Mr. Never Too Up, Never Too Down. On one hand, you say, okay, that is really, it really says a lot about the guy that no matter what the horrific, awful things Donald Trump said about him and people he loves, that he loves this country enough that he's willing to put all that aside and help Donald Trump get the presidency because he believes Trump is a better choice and better for this country than Biden. There's one half of me that says that, wow, I'm really impressed by that. However, as a husband and as a father and as a man, and maybe Ron DeSantis is just a better human being than I am, but there is no way, I mean zero zip zilch, that if somebody said the things about me and about my wife and about my family that Donald Trump said about Ron DeSantis over and over and over and over and over again and largely dispatched his henchmen on Twitter, et cetera, to say the even worse things, that I would lift a finger to help that person. I don't care if it was George Washington uh, rising from the grave. I, I, there's no way I would do that. So is this really noble, and does it show what a great, incredible statesman Ron DeSantis is, or is this just a pathetic person who needs to really be in politics? Sadly, Rob, I think it's the latter because, yes, if you spent three years mocking me mercifully, mercil mercilessly. Yes. I, I forgot it's a big one. Today. It is a big we word. We know what you're saying. Okay, let me keep it to the simple words. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, if, if you mocked me for three straight years and called me Ron to Sanctimonious and went after my family and everything was fair game. And he, I did, would no, he did nothing to Trump. He no. was a supporter of Trump. He said nice things about Trump. I would completely be doing a Chris Christie and give you both birds and be like, <laughs> best of luck to you. You need my state. I, look, I, the, the, and this, I've really struggled with this since I saw this. I was, it's very rare that I see a headline and I am taken aback by it anymore because it's politics and everything's ridiculous and there's like nothing anymore where I'm just like, oh man, that is so over the top. But I saw this and I thought that has to be incorrect because not only did he go after DeSantis, he went after his wife. Yes. His wife, who is a cancer survivor, who again, just like Ron DeSantis, did nothing bad to Trump. And I'll tell you what, the Trump support, and I'm not talking about the people who are voting for Trump, the rank and file, but I'm going to talk about that. But the hardcore, only Trump, almost to a level of bizarre, 
people on Twitter and how mean they were to Ron DeSantis, who Ron DeSantis did nothing wrong. Ron DeSantis was the best governor in America, was the only guy, for the most part, who kept his state open, has fought all the culture wars, everything we should want as Republicans and conservatives. Ron DeSantis did it. And all, the only thing he did was he had the audacity to say, I'd like to run for president. Right. And they were so mean to him. And, but the, 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 the fact that he is... So I'm just thinking, am I... Just totally outside the mainstream for am I totally selfish by saying I would never do this? No, I don't get it. I, I think the Trumpism is a cult. It's because yes. Now Trump- you're not now you're not talking about you're let's just be clear. You're not talking about people who are voting for Trump. No. You're no, not talking I'm, even about people I'm who talking support about Trump. Those hardcore, yeah, they can see no bad in the man. Um, but if you look, yeah, every single, virtually every single person that ran for president this year, Trump went after them, belittled them, made it very personal, and I, it's unbelievable that most of these people are now hosting fundraisers for him, and I mean, they could easily just be silent and say, yeah, I'm going to take a hard pass on this. Do a Miss, Mitch Daniels and say, you know what, yeah, I'm not, not going to be bothered, I'm not going to campaign for anybody this time around. But yet they're actively getting involved. So then I think is being involved with with government so important yeah. that you swallow all your convictions? Well, we saw, we've talked about this on the show, and this is why this is interesting to bring it back locally. We've talked about before how amazed I am that Braun is the clear front runner for governor. He has major what would seem to be mortal flaws in a Republican primary, which he's voted repeatedly for bigger taxes, for bigger government. He voted for all that COVID money. And yet it seems like all of these people that have a shot have been very apprehensive to go at him really hardcore. Now, they've kind of tinkered with it a little bit, but in terms of the actual offense necessary to make a dent in this guy's armor, and multiple people have said, you know, the reason for that is because they think Braun's going to win when it's all said and done, and all of these people want something, whether it's it's a, a, a position in the yep. government, a job in the government, a power in the government, or, you know, if you're a businessman, contracts with the government, and they don't want to honk the guy off, so they're not really putting the full court press on. I just thought that was fascinating. There's no way I would ever do that, so maybe that just means Ron DeSantis is a better person than me. I don't know. Brad's in for Casey. It's Kendall and Casey Show, 93 WIBC. On a map, the southern border is a thousand miles away, but that's not how it feels to my family. I grew up in a blue collar home in Richmond. My dad was a factory worker. He was laid off twice, not because the factory was doing poorly, but because it was cheaper to move those jobs across the border. I'm Jameson Carrier. Today, it's not what's leaving across the border that's devastating our families. It's what's coming in. And once again, it's personal. My wife and I lost our son Joey to fentanyl, a tragedy that's become far too common. To President Biden, secure the border is just a talking point. But to our family, it's life and death. I'm Jamison Carrier. I'm a business owner, a native Hoosier, and a Trump Republican. And we can't wait another day to secure our border and put Americans first. I'm Jamison Carrier, and I approve this message. Jamison Carrier for Congress. Paid for by Carrier for Congress, Inc. What's it like to choose your IPS? It starts with a strong foundation, pre-K. Then choose from elementary schools for every learning style, like Montessori, STEM, and dual language. 100% of IPS middle school students get computer science and music. High school prepares your child for college and a career with 32 career pathways. At IPS, it's about the journey and the destination. Choose your IPS. This ad was paid for by Indianapolis Public Schools. That moment when you realize you have a serious air conditioner issue. A real strip down to your skivvies, no one sleeping tonight, head in the freezer, fail party. But fear not, there's an expert for that. Let your local experts at Broad Ripple Service Experts keep you cool with $50 off any repair. Want to chill? There's an expert for that. Call Broad Ripple Service Experts at 866-EXPERTS. See website for license details. The greatest American rock and roll band in history, Aerosmith. Present Peace Out, the Farewell Tour. Aerosmith, 
with special guest the Black Crows. Cambridge Fieldhouse, January 16, 2025. Get tickets this Friday at 10 a.m. at Ticketmaster.com. Aerosmith with the Black Crows. The Farewell Tour. Peace out. When you use bounce dryer sheets and your clothes look amazing, it's the sheet. Less static in your life? Yeah, it's the sheet. Smelling fresher than ever? It's the sheet. Oh, so soft fabric? Ooh la la. It's the sheet. Less wrinkles on your clothes? You know it's the sheet. Bounce dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness. Less static, less wrinkles. It's the sheet. A broken border, corrupt politicians, and the rise of communist China. We don't need leaders who will surrender. We need America First conservative Mike Speedy. Mike Speedy endorses President Trump and will join him to fix our border once and for all. Mike Speedy will fight the woke leftists to guarantee life and liberty. Speedy has a track record of fighting and winning. Mike Speedy is the only candidate in the GOP primary with both an a rating from the NRA and the endorsement of Indiana Right to Life. Speedy is the conservative who beat the abortion lobby, voting to make Indiana pro-life in the post-Roe v. Wade era. Mike Speedy also voted to ban sanctuary cities and voted to guarantee our right to constitutional carry. Mike Speedy, America first conservative for Congress. Vote Republican Mike Speedy in Indiana's 6th Congressional on or before May 7th. I'm Mike Speedy. I'm running for Congress, and I approve this message. Paid for by Mike Speedy for Congress. Coming up in two minutes, lots of rain has fallen, and you're due to get at least a little more today. Plus, Richard Allen's lawyers want his statements while being held in an Indiana prison stricken from the record, and why Momo's owner now has to pay a fine. I'm Kurt Darling. That and more coming up from the Technology Recyclers Studios after Fox News Radio at the top of the hour. You're listening to 93 WYBC, WYBC HD1 Indianapolis. It's 10 o'clock. They're in mourning. In Memphis, Tennessee, I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News, where a police officer is dead. At approximately 2 a.m., officers responded to a suspicious vehicle call. Then Memphis Interim Police Chief C.J. Davis says, When officers approached the vehicle, they were fired upon by the occupants inside. And one of those officers later died at a hospital where another's being treated. A third was just grazed. Those cops fired back, and one of the teenagers in the car also died. The other was wounded but ran and was arrested later. A House vote this morning appears to pave the way for final approval this afternoon for what's considered a key national security tool, a section of the Foreign Surveillance Intelligence Act, though some lawmakers in both parties fear it infringes on American civil rights. Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren's a Democrat. The FBI executed more than 200,000 warrantless searches of U.S. persons in 2022, including 141 Black Lives Matter protesters, two members of Congress. Fox's Chad Berger reports from the Capitol. Now this is a retooled FISA bill. It renews the controversial spying program for only two years, not five. Republicans like that better. That's because they hope Donald Trump is in the White House when it's due for reauthorization. The head of the U.S. Central Command has just met with Israel's defense minister on the readiness for what's believed to be an impending Iranian attack on Israel. President Biden's done it again, wiping out more student loan debt for the second time this week. Today's plan cancels more than $7 billion worth for 277,000 American borrowers. All told, the administration says $153 billion in student loan debt for 4.3 million people has been wiped away through various actions since a broader forgiveness proposal was struck down by the U.S. Supreme Court last year. That's Fox's Jared Halper, and America's listening to Fox News. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level, on the go. It's like a wet sponge. Showers now moving to the south on Radar 48 downtown. I'm Kirk Darling. Here's what's trending at 10.02. That's how meteorologists are describing the ground throughout Indiana right now as we've hit a record for the wettest start to the month of April due to how much rain has fallen the last two weeks. 
Floodwaters may finally start going down today. We should start to see those recede over the next 24 to 36 hours. So heading into the start of the weekend. So then the problem is all of that will run off into some of the bigger rivers. Meteorologist Marcus Bailey with Wish TV. Did he admit to the murders? If he did, Richard Allen's lawyers want that admission tossed from the evidence in the Delphi murders case. Allen is said to have told another inmate while at the Westville State Prison that he molested and shot Abby Williams and Libby German. Allen's lawyers say on top of him being in a state of psychosis, if he said that, they also say that the manner of death is not what is laid out in the coroner's reports. Because of that, they want any admission of guilt suppressed. A teenage boy killed in a shooting on the northwest side overnight. Nobody talking to police, says IMPD Captain Don Wilhammer. The biggest thing that helps us is people that have seen it or can tell us. Even if it's like, hey, I saw somebody running away from the area or a vehicle driving away. It happened near 25th and MLK. An eight-month-old girl from Indianapolis went missing in 2019 and has never been found. Donnie Burgess reports on a plea deal in the case. Amaya Robertson's mother, Amber, and her boyfriend, Robert Lyons, were both arrested and charged with four counts of neglect in her disappearance. This week, the Marion County Prosecutor's Office made a deal with Lyons, plead guilty to one neglect charge, and the other three will be dropped. He goes to trial in May. Amber Robertson's trial is in June. Donnie Burgess, 93 WIBC Mobile News. Well, you may remember Momo the monkey. He got loose on Indy's Far East Side last year, and his story went viral on social media. Well, Momo's owner now has to pay a fine for his escape. He attempted, or rather, he admitted it to violating city code pertaining to at-large animals, and he must pay a $500 civil penalty plus court costs by September. I'm Kirk Darling, on the level, on the go, and on WIBC.com. Bill Frazier is a Hoosier, an American, who has served our citizens with distinction, determination, and a wisdom that comes with years of experience. Now, Bill Frazier is ready to dedicate his life to serving you as your next congressman in Indiana's 6th District. Bill Frazier is a true conservative. He'll fight for a secure border, smaller government, and lower taxes. He will be a tireless advocate for the Second Amendment and the rights of the unborn. Bill Fraser is a veteran paratrooper, a successful farmer and business owner, a licensed commercial jet pilot, a man with experience. When President Ronald Reagan needed expert advice on agricultural issues, he called on a young Hoosier farmer, Bill Fraser. Ronald Reagan trusted Bill Fraser. You can too. Vote for experience and determination. Vote for the true conservative Hoosier. Vote for Bill Frazier for Congress. I'm Bill Frazier, and I approve this message. Paid for by friends of Bill Frazier. You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Credit card debt is totally out of control, and that is not good for anyone, even if you're a responsible person. <laughs> 93 WIBC, it is the Kendall and Casey Show. I'm Rob Casey's out today. Brad Kloffenstein Stein in for Casey. All right, Brad, so Yahoo has this article, and it says, I'm just going to read you the headline. Credit card delinquency rates were worst on record in Fed study. And are you a credit card man? Are you a man who uses a, a I, credit I, card? Yes. You yes. strike me as a man who, because I know you're a notorious rule follower. I am like a me. Rule, yes, I'm a rule follower. I, I say play by the rules till you can change the rules. And so you strike me as a man who, on a regular basis, not only uh, pays your credit card on time. You strike me as a man who probably pays it on the same day each time. Uh, not I. Uh, well. Yeah, generally. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, you. I don't think about it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I go to my online banking, and yeah. I set it to go in a couple of days before the due date. And Yeah, I am a uh, – look, and this is – it's interesting for me because um, I remember, you, you know, I'm not saying like I was raised by my grandparents, but they were very influential in my upbringing. And they were – and we've told this story before. They are people of the Depression. And it is amazing. My, my grandfather was a, was a railroad engineer, and I was always – I was with great admiration – from their upbringing, you know, greatest generation fought in World War II, they created a very stable uh, middle-class existence for themselves, which is incredible for a group, two people who grew up dirt poor and without shoes running around in the in the 1930s. And I used to, as a young person, I was somewhat interested in finance, I used to talk to them about how they did that. And, and one of the things they always did was that for almost everything, they paid cash. Yeah. Almost everything they did, they paid cash. I'm not sure 
in I was 31 when my grandparents passed away. I'm not sure more than two or three times in my entire life I ever saw them use a credit card. I remember my, my grandparents also, yeah, got married in the Depression. And I remember my grandfather talking about the ills of the bankers and money men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and boy, it, hasn't that played out, Brad. Yes. And I mean, I wish I could, I would just carry cash and pay for everything with cash. A lot of places don't take cash. It's in it, they're making it inconvenient now, right. but but in in Brad's perfect world, it would still be cash based. And, and so try to c- kind of live by that lifestyle yet with the reality of like you're saying that I mean it's 2024. It is first of all, it's dangerous now to be walking around with large amounts of cash, and it's inconvenient. And many places are steering people away from that, et cetera. And they've incentivized you to, to not use cash, right? Like your credit right. card company, you probably get some sort of bonus, incentive, money, whatever, to use that card and pay it on time. So I've tried to meld a, a 21st century, 2024 reality of how life in the world works with that discipline that my grandparents had and say, okay, hey, I'm going to use a credit card, but I am with great discipline always going to pay this thing off, and I almost always pay the thing off within – five days of getting the bill in the mail, even though you've got till whatever the date is, don't wait, go in there. I, and I, I walk it in the bank. I still pay it in person in oh, the wow. bank. So I have a receipt. So I'm, you have a credit card through a local bank. I, I, no uh, less. And I, I always just make sure I, you know, do these things in person. And so I've tried to meld those two things together, but it, I can see, I can see how it is very, very easy for people who did not have that sort of upbringing or did not have that sort of fiscal discipline to not pay a credit card on time because it's out of sight, out of mind, and what does a few, what people perceive as a little bit of interest, what does that matter to me? Right. Well, the credit card companies make it very easy. They will court college students and people when they're young because those people have no debt. Right. And they're, they're uh, in theory, a good credit risk. Yeah. So a uh, new, new survey out or study out has found that almost 3.5% of card balances were at least 30 days past due as of December. Now, that's according to the Philadelphia uh, Fed. That's the highest figure going back to 2012. And that is really alarming, or it should be, whether you're, it it should be alarming if you're a person who is not paying your credit card on time because you're just throwing money away. Right. And you're putting yourself, if you're a person who's ever been behind on your credit cards before, you are putting yourself in a position because of the interest where you cannot climb out of the thing. Right. I mean, so, it, it, eventually you will, you will, and I'm not talking about somebody who, hey, I came up, you know, $30 short on my credit card, but I paid a bunch. I'm talking about there are people who just simply don't pay the thing from one month to the next. Right, exactly. It, yes, they're, they're not paying. In fact, this article says uh, 10% of credit card borrowers now have an account balance that exceeds $5,200. That's incredible. It is. And one quarter are over $2,000, and the number of late payments are increasing as well. Yeah. So I think in my entire existence of having a credit card, I think I was late by one day, one time, and I am such an esteemed member of my financial institution that I walked in there and they're like, yeah, we clearly realized this was a mistake and we will waive your fee. And I handed them the money and I, as a notorious rule follower said, I'm terribly sorry for inconveniencing you with this. And they said, that's fine. We, we realized that that was an honest mistake and they just wiped the yeah. fee out. And as my wife go. tells me, my wife, the reformed banker, yeah. she will say, she's like, yeah, I used to have some tellers that work for me who would, would lecture people who were late and had to pay all these fees because they bounced checks. And she was like, no. This is where we make our money. Right. We, we we say we understand there's a problem. We'll waive the fee this time, knowing that we won't waive it the next time, and that's where we make money. So let me ask you. Yeah. So does this mean this is an excellent time to be investing in Capital One or Visa, or are these institutions getting set up for disaster because people are falling behind and are going to default? Well, and this is part of the larger debate. And you, Brad, you and I share a similarity in the sense of we are about the last people to say the government must fill in the blank. But this is why people do turn to the government, because they see these institutions who it's very clear, and you talked about this, they incentivize you basically to be late. Oh, yeah. They're they're incentivizing me to put things on this credit card. Look, I'm a loss for, for my, my banking institution because I always pay the thing on time. So they're giving me a percentage back and they're never gonna make they're never going to make money off of me because I pay the thing on time. But they recognize for every one of me, there's a handful of people out there who probably don't. And that's how they make their money. They're not doing this. They're not giving you that cash back because they're running a soup kitchen. They're doing it because they know they're going to catch. They're going to catch a fish every so often who gets suckered into that. 
and doesn't pay it back. And so what does it say about these institutions and where are we at as a society where we have institutions who are betting on your financial failure? They, the, they kind of are. They don't want you to completely fail. They just want you to <laughs> yeah, have some right. dings. They, want, now, you, they now, want you to fail just enough. Let's be clear. The credit card companies do make money on the front end because they're getting – Two and a half to four percent that they're charging the retailer right. every time you use that card. You're so, right. So that's how they can afford to give you the you know the points and some sort of a reward on the points balance, just because they're also getting a fee a percentage on the front end. So this is where we're at. I mean, and this is I think the 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 shocking thing for many of us is we are in a world now where we have a public education system that really doesn't teach financial literacy. No. How you could walk out of a high school after being in in school for twelve years and not know how to balance a checkbook, how to manage money, how to write checks. I mean, there's these kids that I work at at the golf course now, and some of them are very, very smart kids. It's not because they're not capable. It's because they're not taught. They don't know how to address an envelope. I had a conversation with one of them not too long ago, and they don't know how to do that. They didn't know how to read the back of a check. They don't understand how taxes are taken out. You have all of these people who are leaving the public education system. Oh, sure, they can speak nine foreign languages, but they can't do the most basic of things that will keep them from getting suckered into something like this, which creates an environment that it will take them years, if ever, that they can get out of it. How is that possible that the public education system does not educate kids on how to do the most basic of financial literacy? Now, Rob, many years ago, you would have been probably a kid when this came out. There was some fast food company, and I want to say it was McDonald's, who briefly ran an ad showing a kid with his first job and, you know, how he's taking pride in his work. He gets his first paycheck, he opens it up, and the smile on his face goes away, and he just goes, who's FICA? Who said they could take all my money? <laughs> I, I've we told this story on the air that I have several of these kids, and again, they're very... You know, they're high school seniors. One of multiple of them are, I mean, they're very smart. One of them is one of the highest ranking people in their graduating class. And they're looking at the back of this check because the, the nice thing about the golf course I work at is they still, while they direct deposit, they still give you a physical check stub to say, here's where you're Good. And they're looking at it. And I can tell it's like, it might as well have been hieroglyphics. And I'm like, do you understand what any of that is? They're like, no. I said, would you like to learn? Yes. And so I spent probably 30 minutes going over it with them. They had no idea what FICA is, no idea what withholding was, no idea what Social Security is. And I said, Haven't you, you're 18 years old. You've been working for several years. Weren't you remotely curious, like, where your money's going and what's happening? Well, you know. And, it's like, and it, people are not exposed to this anymore. And this is, look, it's obviously on parents. I mean, this is number one. It's always on parents. Yep. Parents should be educating their kids on this to, to begin with. I can assure you by the time my daughter is 9 or 10 years old, she'll know FICA. She'll know Social Security. <laughs> she'll know withholding. She'll know state income tax. She'll know county. And she'll know all of these things. So that's number one. But at the very least, if we're going to invest all of this money in the public education system and, you know, hey, it takes a village and they're helping raise our kids now, shouldn't they be teaching this stuff? Shouldn't the weekend guy at the golf course should not have to be educating the kids on how taxes come out of the back of a paycheck? Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, when they talk about, you know, STEM education, STEM is great, but you also need to somewhere there needs to be room for life skills. So how we divvy that up, but you're right, it, there's a lot of people that don't, understand finance they don't understand money and those are the people who open themselves up to being taken advantage of. this is the analogy i'm going to use and then we'll, we'll head on to our next thing because we got a, a very interesting topic coming up um, next segment the masters is this week and there's this old saying at augusta you can't win the tournament on thursday but you can lose it and what that means is even if you shoot really well you, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you success like bryson dechambeau uh is leading the tournament He's probably not going to win. He could, but but he's probably not. There's guys who lead all the time on Thursday, and they aren't even anywhere near the the hoisting the trophy on Sunday. So you can't necessarily win it on Thursday. But if you shoot eight over, you're out of it, right? But if you're eight over, speed. which guy, which guys are, <laughs> yeah, you're you're 13 or 14 or 15 shots back of the leaders. You're not hopping over all those guys. It's the same thing with economics, which is it's so hard to ever get ahead if by the time you're 22, 23 years old. You're so far behind and not teaching people about the importance of fiscal discipline and working hard and managing money and paying these credit cards off on time and not having exorbitant expenses. It is making it so these people are the equivalent of eight or nine over after the first round of the golf tournament and they have almost no chance to win. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. When we come back, it's our um, it's 
our very fabulous segment where we focus on something good going on in the world. And we're going to have a guest for the segment coming up. There's a, a little boy in central Indiana who has a very uh, rare disease. And there's a group of people who are working very hard to try to help find a cure for this disease and give this kid a better life. And I, I heard about these people and I said, we really need to showcase them and what they're doing. We'll do that next. Kendall and Casey show 93 WIBC. Let's talk about the knock on you. Tony Cat. COVID comes, the state locks down, you are there right next to Governor Eric Holcomb, and you say nothing. Gets beyond the talking points. Let me give you the story about you in case you didn't know this. No one knows who you are, sir. With the GOP gubernatorial candidates. You're a nice guy. Literally no one has any idea. How do you overcome that? Can you outspend Mike Braun? Because that's what you're going to have to do to win this. Stream thing. all the videos at WIPC.com. $5,000. That's the average amount of money people in the U.S. are now spending on gas in a year. Five grand. That's crazy. If you drive, you have to download Upside, the free app that gives you cash back every time you get gas. That's right. You can earn real cash back with Upside just by buying the gas you're already buying. You can literally start earning cash back today. I use Upside every time I fill up. and I've already made around two, $300. You're putting gas in your car anyway. Why not get real cash back? If you like free money, download Upside. I'm saving the cash I earn from using Upside to help pay for a vacation later this year. Download the free Upside app now to earn cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code PICKUP to get an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first tank. You can cash out anytime right to your bank, PayPal, or a gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code PICKUP. For a 25 cents per gallon bonus on your first tank, that's code PICKUP. For a 25 cents per gallon bonus. Let Bill Estes put you behind the wheel of the powerhouse brands that define American toughness. Ford, Chevy, Ram, and GMC. Get 2.9% APR for 72 months on all GMC Sierra 1500s, plus $2,000 customer cash on 6.2 liter Sierra Denali's. Unleash the power of the road with Bill Estes Trucks. Find the location near you and see their inventory at BillEstesTrucks.com. Financing for well-qualified buyers. Some customers may not qualify. Not available with lease and some other offers. See dealer for details. If you see me stopped in the McDonald's drive-thru, just staring at the menu with my what-should-I-order face, don't interrupt. It's the most important decision I'll make all day. Decide on delicious with buy one, get one for a dollar. Now with the hot and spicy McChicken, McDouble, or small fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Valid for product of equal or lesser value. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. Go where the pros go. Drexel Interiors for Timberlake Kitchen and Bath Cabinets. Visit Drexel's new design center on 146th Street at River Road or on North Shadeland. DrexelIN.com. Tired of hearing Rob talk about all the bad news? Time to find your happy place. Turn that frown upside down. It's time for Shining Rainbows with Rob. Ah, yes, it is our feel-good segment of the day. 93 WIBC, it is the Kendall and Casey Show. I'm Rob Earl Pal, Brad Kloppenstein Stein in for Casey today. One of the things we do during uh, this 1015 segment almost every single day is we showcase great things that are going on in the world, and specifically right here in the Indianapolis community. And there is one local organization that is stepping up to help a young boy who has an incredibly rare disease, and they are doing some incredible work to try to find a cure for this rare disease that impacts less than 200 people in the entire world. It's called Infantile. Neural Exonal Dystrophy, or INAD for short, and Heather Prentice joins us now. She's with the group called INAD Warriors. Heather, tell us a little bit about this infantile neural exonal dystrophy and what you guys are trying to do to help find a cure and help one boy locally. So, um, as you mentioned, I'm with INAD Warriors. We're a nonprofit, and we were just founded about a year ago. 
And our mission is to raise awareness about this ultra rare pediatric genetic disorder um, and to also raise money to try to help researchers find a potential treatment or maybe even a cure. Um, INAD is an inherited disorder. And so when both parents carry this gene, there's a 25% chance that their child will present with the disease. And what it's doing is um, accumulating too much iron in, in the brain, which then results in destroying the axons or the nerve cells that carry the messages in the brain. And unfortunately, um, what the result or the outcome of this is that children will start presenting with falling behind on their developmental milestones. They will start to suffer loss of motor control. They start to show vision impairment and eventually become wheelchair bound and unfortunately need the use of a feeding tube to support their nutrition. And sadly, heartbreakingly, over time, the average life expectancy of this rare disease is only about 10 years. And when we say that it's rare, um, it's really classified as a disease that we call ultra rare. We don't know the specific prevalence of the disease, but at this time, it's estimated that only maybe 150 children worldwide are afflicted, and that includes a very little boy, young little boy, he's three years old, and he's living here in our own Indiana community, and his name is Warner Case. Hey, hey Heather, let me, real, quick, real quick, Heather, let me introduce you again. Uh, Heather Prentice is, is our guest. Uh, she's with a, a fabulous local group called INAD Warriors. And again, Heather, because I am in radio, and uh, I am totally going to butcher the name of this, tell us again about this local, this disease that you guys are really invested in trying to help find a cure for because it's a affecting a, a local boy here, and then we'll talk about what you guys are doing. Yeah, it's, it's infantile neural axonal dystrophy, or called INAD, spelled I-N-A-D. And it's really um, unusual, very rare. Less than 150 children worldwide are afflicted by it, including our, our little boyfriend, Warner. And what we're doing, um, we've been really inspired by his courageous journey. Um, and we formed this nonprofit in order to not only raise awareness about it, but to do fundraisers at the grassroots level. And we're really trying to raise funds to support researchers that are trying to learn more about this disease and hopefully one day find a treatment or a cure. So we're hosting several um, fundraising events throughout the year. Um, and I'd like to share some information about that. Sure. If you're listening. The first one um, I want to share is called the Blue Ties and Diamonds Gala. It's actually the second year that we're hosting this big event. Um, it'll be at the historic Columbia Club and at the Circle in downtown Indianapolis. The date is August 24th. Um, this is our premier event, and we uh, hosted last year almost 250 of our business leaders and members of our community attended. And we raised over $70,000 at our event in ticket wow. sales and corporate sponsorships. And using that um, grassroots fundraising, we combined it with another partner nonprofit that we are working with that's also interested in supporting research in this space. And we issued a $100,000 competitive INAD research grant um, that will be awarded, and we'll make the announcement on who will actually receive that award later in June. And that's just one small step toward the contribution that we're trying to make in learning more about this disease and hopefully um, helping all the children with INAD, not just Warner, to um, have a potential treatment someday, maybe even a cure, and live longer, happier lives. I, I just love that you guys are doing this. Again, Heather Prentice is our guest. She's with a group called INAD Warriors. Again, Heather, I give it to you because I am just terrible pronouncing this, even though it's a super serious disease. What is the name of the disease again? It's infantile neuroaxonal dystrophy, also known as INAD. And um, going back to that event that we're hosting in August, we will be having ticket sales coming up and information about the event and the various corporate sponsorships and ways that maybe companies could donate items for the auction. That will all be available on our website, which is INAD, spelled I-N-A-D, warriors.org. Your listeners will be able to go to our website and our other social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram and learn more about that event, as well as two others that we're hosting this year. We have two other really family-friendly events that we're planning. One is a bourbon barrel bash. Oh, Everyone wow. really likes bourbon. And that will be in, on the 1st of June at the Barnet Milk House Lane in Morrisville. 
And we're also hosting a 5K run and car show at the Hendricks County Fairgrounds in September. So all the details about these events and links to purchase tickets or even make a donation if you're not able to join us in person, that's all available on our website at INAD, spelled I-N-A-D, warriors.org. And we'd also like to invite all your listeners to please follow us on our social media platforms as well. We're giving updates on the progress of Warner's personal journey with this rare disease and our progress to help all the children that are afflicted with it to hopefully someday um, find a treatment or a cure through um, grassroots fundraising efforts that we're doing in our local community. Well, I just love that you guys are doing this, and I, and I really do love that you guys are willing to step up on this rare disease. And that was just one thing before I let you go I was going to kind of ask you about was because, you know, when it's, when it's cancer or things that are so prevalent, you get a lot more people involved. Have you guys had challenges because this is such a rare disease that while it clearly has just debilitating effects on people, um, you kind of have to educate people on even what it is. And has that really hindered your ability to get people involved? I would say that really raising awareness and having a platform like this is really um, wonderful. And I really do appreciate it. But raising the awareness has been challenging because it's not something that anyone, even, even our medical community, um, is challenged to understand it because it's so unusual and rare. Um, but we are doing our best. And I, I think the the beauty of being able to join on shows like this and get the word out um, and the support that we really have in our local community, they like to call themselves Warriors for Warner. Um, it's really been tremendous. And last year, we've only been a nonprofit for one year. But when I think back on the efforts and the advancements we've made, it's really, it just really shows that the Indianapolis community, the greater Indianapolis community, really does want to get behind stories like this and provide their support. Um, we've really had great attendance at that um, gala last year, and we're looking forward to having it be even bigger and better this year, as well as our other um, family-centered events that we're planning in June and September. So it is a challenge, but being able to um, be here with you and share this information today is just helping us make it get out even better well we love it uh heather prentice thank you again and real quick before i let you go the website if people would like more information it's inad spelled i-n-a-d warriors.org and we also have a facebook and instagram so if you just um type that in you'll be able to search it and find us and please start following us so that we can share the story and um, and make that that information more readily available all right heather thank you very much we appreciate you thank you rob i really appreciate it 93 WIBC, it is the Kendall and Casey Show. 93 WIBC Mobile News, on the level, on the go. Approaching a record, it's cloudy, some showers lingering in central Indiana, 48 downtown. I'm Kirk Darling, here's what's trending at 1030. It's been raining for what feels like nonstop for the last three days. That's causing some flooding issues in many places. It's now put us into a point where we're just shy of six inches of rainfall for the month of April That is now the wettest start to the month we've ever had on record. Wish TV meteorologist Marcus Bailey. President Biden for giving almost $7.5 billion in student loan debt. The new plan, different from the one that he announced last week, will affect an estimated 277,000 borrowers. So far, the White House canceling over $150 billion worth of debt for over 4 million people. The federal government may foot the bill to rebuild the key bridge in Baltimore. Fox's Ryan Schmelz. The bill introduced by Maryland's congressional delegation would allow the federal government to fully fund replacing the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. This comes after Maryland Governor Wes Moore and Maryland lawmakers have had several meetings with Biden administration officials and congressional leaders. Maryland Senator Ben Cardin says just because the federal government is stepping up, that doesn't mean anyone found responsible for the bridge collapse is off the hook. Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. I'm Kirk Darling on the level, on the go, and on WYBC.com. Your nose is for breathing. Your mouth is for eating. And if you're breathing through your mouth, it's not because your body wants to. It's because it has to, because your nose isn't working properly. And although you've lived like this, it's no way to live, and it's having a significant impact on your life. I know you know this, and I know that taking action isn't always convenient. But at Advent, we've done all we can to make changing your life for the better as easy as possible. I'm Dr. Mothin Candula. With tens of thousands of our patients, a thorough breathing triangle evaluation, along with a simple 20-minute in-office procedure called balloon sinuplasty, has opened their nasal passages, allowing them to breathe freely through their nose 
for good. And there's a good chance this procedure can do the same for you. We'll help you breathe through your nose again, and it will change your life. Go to AdventNose.com to schedule your appointment because Advent knows when you breathe well, you live better. AdventNose.com Results may vary. Live Church, that is the place to be this Sunday. Uh, That's the place I'll be this Sunday. Uh, If you are looking for a new church home or even a first church home, can't recommend enough my friends at Life Church. You know, many WIBC listeners over the years have found a home at Life Church. And uh, I'll tell you what, I got a chance to meet some of them last night. Life Church is just so great. They're such a family, they're such a community, and they would love the opportunity this Sunday to meet and welcome you and your family. Life Church makes it easy for you. All campuses all across central Indiana, Noblesville, Fishers, Eagle Creek, and Pendleton. Incredible online services. Learn more about everything at lifechurchin.com. Hey, honey, take a look at this. I thought Chinese businesses buying up Indiana farmland was illegal. Well, politician Chuck Goodrich voted for a special deal to let Chinese communist companies buy farmland. Oh, I guess that's why they're calling him China Chuck. Yeah, he also gave a sweetheart deal to another Chinese company to control Indiana land. Oh, he really earned that name, China Chuck. Worse, that Chinese company that Chuck Goodrich gave the deal to? President Trump banned it because it was a national security threat. Wow, I'm not voting for China Chuck Goodrich. He puts China first and Hoosiers last. Remind me, who's China Chuck Goodrich running against? It's Republican Victoria Sparts. Oh, I love Victoria Sparts. She's an America First conservative. She stands with President Trump to finish the wall and defend our borders. No, oh, Victoria's got my vote. I am Victoria Sparts, candidate for Congress, and I approve this message. Paid for by Victoria Sparts for Congress. Sometimes I struggle to get to sleep. My body stopped for the day, but my mind is still running. So I take ZQuil. ZQuil, the world's number one sleep aid brand, has a range of non-habit forming products to fit you and your family's needs. Invest in a great night's sleep for the best you tomorrow. I'm awake and ready to take on anything. Better days start with ZQuil nights. Explore our products at ZQuil.com. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Healthcare.gov is here for you when life happens. If you lost your health coverage because of turning 26, going off Medicaid, leaving your job, or moving, you could be eligible to enroll in new coverage now. And if you need to update your coverage because of marriage or having a baby, you could also be eligible. But don't wait. There's a limited time to enroll. Check your eligibility at healthcare.gov today. Life happens. Get covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you could start your new career in the high-demand, recession-resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So, get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career. No experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. Andy's leader in patio installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. Emery and Nigel here inviting you to join us as we kick off the weekend every Friday around 545 with Beer Sample Friday. Brought to you by our friends at Thompson Furniture and Mattress in Columbus. You're listening to The Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. It's time to hear from you. Kendall and Casey present Voicemails. Brought to you by QC Kinetics for non-surgical regenerative medicine treatments at 317-559-PAIN. It is the Kendall and Casey Show. I'm Rob. Brad Kloppenstein Stein is in for Casey today. Kev's here. Your voicemails, 317-684-8444. That's how you can be a part of the show. So yesterday, Brad, we did a story on, uh, you know, Biden had a meeting with, with the, the head honcho over there in Japan. And one of the things apparently Japan is going to be doing is sending a guy to the moon. Really? And we kind of had a little, Casey and I did a little back and forth about 
what the premise of that is, what we're trying to accomplish, like what what of all the things going on in the world and how governments across the globe are appear to be stretched pretty thin thanks to all the money they printed during COVID. Is that really a great use of your resources? I, I know the answer to this, Rob. Yes, I know Brad. the answer. Yes, Brad. So, uh, as you know, me and Jim Merritt, we have a podcast that we do together. You do. It's the called Merritt in the Morning. Merritt in the Morning podcast. And so, a couple weeks ago, uh, we had the uh, the people who were putting together Grand Universe up in uh, Westfield. Yeah. And um, uh, we asked them, because this guy used to work for NASA, and I'm like, hey, 50 years ago, we went to the moon a few times, decided it was worthless being there, and we never went back. How come everybody is suddenly, you know, trying to get back up to the moon and establish colonies and things up there? Apparently on the moon, on one of the poles, there is something called helium-3. Oh. And helium-3 apparently is used in nuclear fission. Oh, which that is a dangerous. So, well, it can create a lot of energy with virtually no waste. Ah. So, for if if energy is important, which it is, that could be a vast source of energy for whoever gets there and, and grabs it. So, Casey and I had a little back and forth about this, and we had uh, one person who had a very strong opinion about Japan going to the moon. What a bunch of lies. They know good and well they never went to the moon. It's nothing but lies. I got two or three books there in my library, uh, the uh, life books and stuff that they used to have, the encyclopedias like. It is so daggone phony. You see the space thing laying on the moon, no stars or anything in the background, and the flimsy-ass suits they had. It's all lies. If they had been to the moon, they would have gutted it out by now. There's nothing we can do in space, not one thing. They need to uh, get the people that, that uh, ripped us off for all that money with NASA and throw their ass in jail. They know good and well they ain't been nowhere near the moon. So, so that's crazy, Larry. <laughs> I played that just for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do you have one of those a day at least? Uh, oh, Larry calls all the time, and we love Larry, and he's a very loyal listener to the show. And every so often, uh, we just we just pop a, a thought or two from Larry. <laughs> I, I appreciate that you did that for the fill-in host today <laughs> I and just that. offered that up first thing. <laughs> so uh, are you a person who believes we've been to the moon, Brad? I do believe we've been to the moon. I'm I'm always amused when I run across conspiratorialists. Conspiracy uh, theorists? Conspiracy theorists. Yeah. I can't talk today. That, my words. Well, that's only your job, Brad. I know. I, I we know. don't expect too I, much of you. No, my job is to fill the space between the commercials. <laughs> what, what is in that space is less important. Yeah. <laughs> so... So there's still the people who think we didn't go to the moon. Uh, I ran across a guy who, the guy in line behind me at the bank yesterday, who just randomly starts talking about, well, you know, I knew it was going to be raining here two days ago because you looked up in that blue sky in the day of the eclipse, and there were all those contrails up there being dropped by the government, and they're seeding the, seeding the sky so that it'll rain. And I'm like, and I, I'm trying not to acknowledge this man. Wait, wait, this is in a bank? Like this a financial institution? In a institution? line at the bank. He was talking to you? Talking to me. D didn't know you? Didn't know me. Just never thought, seen him. Thought you'd want to know his thoughts uh, on the, on the, the what, Kim he, trails? He was kind of just throwing it out into yeah. the ether in general, but he's looking at me like he's thinking that I'm somebody who's going to engage him in this conversation. What's going to say about you? I, <laughs> Rob, it's a story <laughs> of my life. Every crazy person on earth is attracted to me, apparently. <laughs> And uh, so, or I, I was having another conversation a couple days ago who was people who were convinced that China is behind the uh, freighter that hit the bridge yeah. in Baltimore. Yeah. Well, and that's not that outlandish, is it? I mean, we don't know anything yet about that. And the fact that they immediately declared it, uh, you know, uh, non, you know, whatever, that it was uh, accident or whatever. How would they know that fast? I mean, this is the the bigger thing here is, okay, Larry sometimes is a little out in left field. But there are there is a reason for people to be questioning of their government at every turn because the world needs a, a dishonest. The world needs a Larry, even if Larry Larry is wrong a lot, <laughs> but he's not always wrong, and we need somebody who's not willing to or who's not not scared to go out there and go out on a limb. Uh, obviously, yesterday the big news so we broke this on on the show and and uh, uh, put it out there that O.J. Simpson had passed away at the age of seventy six. Got uh, multiple calls about that, and here is uh, here is one of those. So I was listening to your show from yesterday, where you guys broke in and announced that O.J. Simpson had died, and it was either you or Hammer came on and said 
that the Simpson family has asked for, you know, privacy and, and respect during these, this troubled time or this sad time, whatever it is. Um, I mean, I guess we can all take a stab at doing <laughs> See what he did there? I saw what he did there. See I, what he did there? That, that was skillful. Yeah, uh, that was a good one. All right, one more, and then we'll get to find out uh, how fat Hammer is. Um, so, obviously, as we said yesterday, last night, Casey and I went and did that big event for Micah Beckwith. The place was packed. A ton of people are running for delegate, and you're helping people who are running for delegate are there. And I'll tell you what, Brad, uh, I told you this earlier. He may not win, but he is making those people in the Republican Party establishment sweat their ass off because they are going to have to work like hell in order to beat him at convention. It's it's a, it's a jump ball at this point. 50-50, he could, it, Micah could beat the lieutenant governor. He could be. I mean, I agree because that convention, that's what, 800 people. So in a room of 800, Micah's a charming guy. He could charm them. Yeah, so obviously the, the way this is going to go is going to depend on who gets elected delegate. Uh, every community, you have delegates at the end of your ballot to vote on. Um, and I know that people are questioning, well, like, who are the people who are going to vote for Micah? Uh, somebody called with a question about that. And she also wanted to talk a little bit about Biden continuing to just put a middle finger in the face of the Supreme Court and cancel more of the student loan debt. Hi, Kendall and Katie. I have a question. Are you going to put the people's names that we should vote for to help? Micah Beckwith get the lieutenant governor uh, nomination at the Republican convention because I just went on the WIBC.com website and couldn't find uh, the list of names. Where will you be having them? I'm not savvy. I don't get on social media or any of that stuff. And also, what is going on with Biden? I am a senior citizen, why should I be paying for student loans for people that are not related to me? If it was my children or grandchildren, that would be different. But I'm not paying. I don't want to pay for somebody's student loan who got uh, a degree in uh, gender studies or junk like that. Keep up the good work. Like your show. Bye. Yeah, so two things. One, and we talked about this a little bit last night at that event, the establishment has actively recruited a bunch of people to run because they do not want him to be the lieutenant governor. So I've told maybe later today they're actually going to finally have that list out on his website of people who have pledged said, hey, we're supporting on Micah, Micah's website on Micah's website. So I'll I'll share it at Rob M. Kendall, et cetera, when it when it gets out and then we'll talk a little bit about it. It is fascinating to me though, Brad, you have way more people than ever before running for state delegate. And I talked with the delegate a uh, guy who's been to five conventions, and he said, there's a bunch of people I have no idea who these people are who are running for delegate, and he said there is no way they accidentally found their way to running for convention delegate. So the party, the apparatus, the state party is actively mobilizing against him and has put people up to run. So I'm curious, in a normal year, it, A, how many people get elected? Is 800 the number? Of the 1,800. 1,800. Yeah. So 1,800 get elected to state delegate. How many people typically run? Well, that's, I mean, it's like in Brownsburg or Avon, there's 30 plus people running for 10 spots in each community. It's usually 20 to 25. So if you extrapolate that out, now here's what's going to go down. Mike is going to clean up in these rural areas, the Vils, the Bergs, the et cetera. Anything that starts with green? He is going to boat race whoever the governor's, the state party puts up in, in rural parts of the state. The problem is going to be they're going to try to run up the score in the suburbs, and can he deflect that and get enough of those people at the convention? So we'll see. We'll get that list. Do not vote for anyone who does not promise you they're going to vote for him, though. Don't just pick somebody because they're your friend. Don't pick somebody because, well, they've been conservative in the past. That don't mean nothing on this one. That don't mean nothing. So uh, real quick, too, and we got to get to Hammer. The student loan stuff by Biden is ridiculous. Yes. It's utterly ridiculous. Pandering. Yeah, I mean, it's just pathetic. This is why our country is $34 trillion in debt. This is why everything's so expensive. That lady's absolutely right. There is zero reason. College is your responsibility or your parents' or grandparents' responsibility if they agree to pay for it. Your college is not my responsibility. Everybody should be just just outraged over this. And and as usual, people just just spend their lives twiddling their thumbs whistling while the country burns all right hey, let's take a break hammer we'll find out how fatty is coming up next 93 wibc tonight on the tony kinnick cast the rnc starts acting like an organization that actually wants to win elections huh 
Oh, and we dive into mail time. Tune in at 7 p.m. right here or the podcast anytime. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to act to maximize your equity. Mark Deedle has the plan and experience to sell your home fast and for maximum value this spring. Maybe you're worried about costly repairs or upgrades to sell your home. Mark Deedle guarantees your home sold at a mutually agreed upon price and deadline or he will buy it. Listen to what Crystal in Franklin had to say about working with Mark Deedle. I was moving to Kentucky and needed to move fast. I got the Mark Deedle marketing plan and was blown away. The plan worked. I got a full list price offer in the first weekend. Just like that, Mark and his team got it done. Call the agent I trust and recommend and the agent who guarantees your home sold or he'll buy it. Call Mark Deedle, 317-755-4232 for all the details or go online to markdeedle.com. That's Mark, D-I-E-T-E-L.com. Tell him Rob sent you. On a map, the southern border is a thousand miles away, but that's not how it feels to my family. I grew up in a blue collar home in Richmond. My dad was a factory worker. He was laid off twice. Not because the factory was doing poorly, but because it was cheaper to move those jobs across the border. I'm Jameson Carrier. Today, it's not what's leaving across the border that's devastating our families. It's what's coming in. And once again, it's personal. My wife and I lost our son Joey to fentanyl, a tragedy that's become far too common. To President Biden, secure the border is just a talking point. But to our family, it's life and death. I'm Jameson Carrier. I'm a business owner, a native Hoosier, and a Trump Republican. And we can't wait another day to secure our border and put Americans first. I'm Jameson Carrier, and I approve this message. Jameson Carrier for Congress. Paid for by Carrier for Congress, Inc. Sinus pain. You know it all too well. It's constant. It's frustrating. The pressure. The headaches. The snoring. The constant clogged feeling. You're tired of feeling like this, but you've tried nasal sprays, over-the-counter medicines, even home remedies. No matter what you try, nothing gives you lasting sinus relief. You're tired of missing out and feeling miserable. There is something you can do. Something different. Indianapolis Sinus Center. The physicians at Indianapolis Sinus Center have been serving the community with proven treatments for over 50 years. They know what you're going through, and they're standing by ready to offer you the best treatments to provide long-term relief. Breathe better. You don't have to keep suffering from sinus pain. Call Indianapolis Sinus Center today at 317-528-9650 and take the first step toward relief. 317-528-9650. That's 317-528-9650. Or go to IndianapolisSinusCenter.com. Raju, Raju, shades of red, white, and blue. Guarding dreams for all, he believes in you. Raju Chinthala is a healthcare professional, a successful businessman, and a community leader with experience. Raju is ready to be your next congressman in the 5th District. Raju for you. Raju, Raju, shades of red, white, and blue. Raju is a family man ready to represent your family with Hoosier values. And he's a man of action, ready to get things done. Vote for Raju Chinthala, Republican 5th District Congress. Raju, Raju, shades of red, white, and blue. Guarding dreams for all. I'm Raju Chintala, and I approve this message. Paid for by Raju for Congress. The tropicals are here, and the nursery is fully stocked at Sundown Gardens. 186th Street and Spring Mill Road in Westfield. Sundowngardens.com. That's sundowngardens.com. All right, fat boy. Yes, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Jason Hammer is here. Brad is in for Casey today. All right, so you took your final time out on our weigh-in, a little weigh-in saga that we have. For those of you new to the program, uh, about, a what was this, seven or eight months ago now, Hammer recognized that he was morbidly obese and had to do something. In fact, you actually weighed the equivalent of a baby elephant. Yes, and, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up every single well, I'm week. I'm a motivator. I'm a motivator. <laughs> and so you started at uh, 271 in August. You are now, what, 240.5? Right. So from August 11th, where I weighed 271, to the last time we weighed in, which was March 15th, 
uh, to 40.5. So you're because, down almost 30 pounds, yes. over 30 pounds. Yeah. And the way this works is each week I will step on the scale that's here in the studio. I wear the same clothing yeah, every do. week. Yep. And if I'm even or down, even if it's 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2, yep. great. Survive in advance, moving on. If I gain, even if it's by 0. 0.1 or yep. 0. 0.2, I've got to put – Five dollars into a virtual pot for Rob Kendall, to which he will do God knows what with yeah, it. Yeah, and so you've got to. And thank you for acting like I'm going to be some debaucher. I'm going to give it to Project Rescue, the fabulous charity that helps fight human sex trafficking. So thank you. Sorry for doing something nice for the uh, the. I'll sex believe it when I see that donation go in. <laughs> Until then, I think Cheryl from Applebee's has still got skin in the game. Okay, so uh, you and one other thing, you did get three timeouts throughout the course of this this uh, little venture. Uh, where any week you feel like you're going to be over, you can use a timeout, and you don't have to weigh in that week. You did do that last week because you knew you were going to be over. Right. And so um, this is, you're out of timeouts now. So this so is it. So it's game on. Hey, you look close. I can usually tell with you. I can usually tell one way or another. I have no idea this week. Like, you would be an amazing carny. <laughs> Like, you could be at the fair guessing people's weight, right? Hammer will verify each week. I can look at him and tell whether he's up or not. Now, since your last weigh-in, you've been on spring break. There's been an NCAA tournament that involves yes. lots of wings and beer. And, I mean, I, but you I, I'm pulling week, for you, you, but I'm not confident. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's always a but when people say, I'm pulling for you, but <laughs> you're kind of an unlikable a-hole. How many, how many times did you make yourself puke this week? Oh, I'm not a puker. No, I'm more of a pooper than I am a puker. <laughs> so, let's get this party started, All shall right, we? here goes Hammer. He's we got to a... beat 240.5. All right, Hammer is uh, taking off the headphones. He's Kev, get your thumb more of a the shuffle there. and a waddle these days over to the scale. Oh, look at the number. Oh, that's... Look at that number, baby. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. One more time. Are you sure? One more time. That's too big of a coincidence. Look at it! Look at it! Uh, oh yeah, baby! Yes, sir! That's depressing. I had to beat 240.5. This week I weighed in at 240.4. Yeah! That's Point one, baby! Let's go! See, this is really the worst of everything, because you really didn't improve your health at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're just as fat as you were, and yet I don't get the five dollars. See, I would beg to differ because I have lost a lot of weight this week. Because, as Mr. Kloppenstein pointed out, when I go on vacation, I go hard in the paint. Yeah, I eat, I drink a lot, and uh, that was tough to get off. So you, you should go get a job in the government or be a politician because your excuse of well, in the aggregate, I didn't really lose anything, but I'm not near as near death as I was a week ago. Hot dang! I'm gonna pull a full Joe Hog set here. The numbers going down. <laughs> Point one, but the number's going down. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, this afternoon, man, we are super excited. So Beer Sample Friday, presented by Thompson Furniture yeah, and Mattress. Every Friday, we get this rolling around 548, 550 sometimes. Look what's making its oh, debut. No, here, put this over here. Let's Look at this. this sweet bastard right here. Put it up on the YouTube feed for everyone. The it's... beer bong makes its debut today. That's a thing of beauty. It on says the I... Hammer and Nigel show. I love it says I got bonged. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do this on the live YouTube stream this afternoon. I love it. Brad's in for Casey. It's Kendall Casey Show, 93 WIBC. <laughs> Hey, it's Rob. Why did I choose We Grow Hair Indy to grow my hair back? Simple. They have the best results. Darren Andrews, as clinic director, can you tell us how you get those amazing results that we see on WeGrowHairIndy.com? Yeah, thanks, Rob. Well, it's not just one thing that brings great results. At We Grow Hair Indy, there are three things. One, our microscopic evaluation helps us create the right treatment plan. Two, the best procedure can give you the best results. We're one of only two clinics in the entire country to offer the Artist Robotic FUE procedure and the multi-unit hair grafting procedure. And I know number three is the follow-up care to make sure I'm getting the results I expected. Stay tuned, guys, and watch my hair grow back on my VIP page at wegrowhairindy.com. Call 317-522-2995 for your first step, a free evaluation. That's 317-522-2995. Get the results you want and grow your hair back. 
What if you could build a six-figure retirement income with almost half the money saved? You heard that right. Get a discount on your retirement creating a six-figure income with 40% less than traditional 401ks and mutual funds. Hi, I'm Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, executive producer, and star in a brand new Hollywood documentary called The Retirement Deception. In this film, we traveled over 20,000 miles interviewing real Americans who've retired successfully with a great lifestyle and peace of mind. They share their stories on how they get more retirement income with the same dollar saved, and the money's never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes 30%, you lose nothing. Even the super wealthy are shifting money to this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop working years sooner. So if you're over 50 and want a bigger, better retirement with less money saved, call to talk to a specialist and get a free copy of this brand new movie at 800-486-9595. This is a $30 value, but when you call today, you can get it completely free. I'll even cover shipping and handling, no credit card required. Call right now, 1-800-486-9595. That's 1-800-486-9595. Again, that's 1-800-486-9595. My husband, Bob, has Parkinson's and he needs more help now. And I need more support to help him. Thanks to Indiana Pathways for Aging, we're getting the support we need to help him right here at home. Like with meal prep and basic personal care and even respite support for me. Pathways provides Hoosier Medicaid members, age 60 and over, support for care their way. So they can live life their way. Eligible members can select a plan now. Call 87-PATHWAY-4 or visit in.gov slash pathways. Do you find yourself stuck in a timeshare? Get the real facts about the timeshare industry and your options for cancellation. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has put together a free information guide that reveals the secrets the timeshare industry doesn't want you to know, including the five ways to get rid of your timeshare. Call now and get this timeshare information guide absolutely free. Call 800-919-3200. That's 800-919-3200. 800-919-3200. That moment when you realize you have a serious air conditioner issue, a real strip down to your skivvies, no one sleeping tonight, head in the freezer, fail party. But fear not. There's an expert for that. Let your local experts at Broad Ripple Service Experts keep you cool. Get worry-free comfort for one low monthly payment. Want to chill? There's an expert for that. Call Broad Ripple Service Experts at 866-EXPERTS. See website for license details. The countdown is on for the 2024 NFL Draft presented by Bud Light in Detroit, and you can attend in person for free. Experience live concerts, interactive games, player autographs, and more April 25th to 27th. Visit NFL.com slash draft access to register for free entry today. Go where the pros go. Drexel Interiors for Timberlake Kitchen and Bath Cabinets. Visit Drexel's new design center on 146th Street at River Road or on North Shadeland. DrexelIN.com. Coming up in two minutes, what forecasters are saying about all this rain and what's ahead for the weekend, plus what police are getting ready for when it comes to a few things that may cause some issues downtown soon and how the Pacers are approaching their last two and critical games of the regular season. I'm Kurt Darling. That and more coming up from the Technology Recycler Studios after Fox News. You're listening to 93 WIBC, WIBC HD1 Indianapolis. It's 11 o'clock. A police officer is being mourned in Tennessee. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News, gunned down at about 2 o'clock this morning. The men and women of the Memphis Police Department are hurt right now. Memphis Police Chief C.J. Davis saying an officer was murdered on the job overnight as suspects opened fire on officers unprovoked. That officer is Joseph McKinney. The shooting, as officers responded to a report of a suspicious car, two other officers shot, one hospitalized. It was two teens who opened fire from that car. One was killed when cops shot back. The other wounded then arrested. And Fox's Jeff Manasso also reports. We're told one of them was arrested just weeks ago in a stolen car with a Glock switch that converts a semi-automatic weapon into a machine gun. He was charged with stealing two vehicles before a Memphis judge set him free without bond. Days after a bill to reauthorize a controversial section of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act failed in the House, a revised version cleared a hurdle this morning, teeing up what could be final approval this afternoon. Changes include reauthorizing the program for two years instead of five and allowing a vote on amendments like a warrant requirement. Section 702 allows for the warrantless surveillance of foreign persons, which the intelligence community says is vital to preventing terror attacks. 
Some lawmakers argue the program is in need of reform because it's been used to collect data on Americans. Fox's Ryan Schmelz, the day after FBI Director Christopher Wray warned about growing terror threats in the U.S., we're learning about an Afghan national who came to the U.S. illegally, now in custody after being placed on the terror watch list. Connected to Hezb-e-Islami, that translates to the political party of Islam. They're a radical anti-Western group said to be responsible for the deaths of uh, nine U.S. soldiers and civilians. So in February, Carwin was picked up again. Again, but uh, information about his radical ties, for whatever reason, was not relayed to the judge, so he was released a second time on bail. He has now since been picked up. Fox's Mike Tobin in Texas. America's listening to Fox News. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. Better check before you drive. Some lingering rain on radar. It's cloudy and 48 downtown. I'm Kurt Darling for Wind Donation. Here's what's trending at 1102. Another day of rain, which means more problems with flooding. A lot of the creeks and streams are what's causing the big problems with some of these these streets that have been shut down. Wish TV meteorologist Marcus Bailey, who says this is now the wettest start to the month of April on record. It was a teenager shot and shot to death overnight on the northwest side. Police say the boy was shot along with a man near 25th and MLK. The man survived. The boy pronounced dead at the scene. Police in Indianapolis preparing for a pro- potential pro-Palestinian protest next week. Donnie Burgess reports. Several local pro-Palestine organizers are planning for protests protests across the country Monday, April 15th, and Indianapolis is one of the cities listed, although Indy Metro Police aren't quite sure if anyone will actually show up. The point of the protest is to put up an economic blockade, which is another way of saying don't do business as a way to protest U.S. support of Israel. IMPD and Indiana State Police are working together on safety measures. Donnie Burgess, 93 WIBC Mobile News. It's possible Richard Allen admitted to the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German while he was being held at the Westville State Prison. It's said that he admitted to the murders to another inmate, and if that's the case, Allen's defense lawyers are calling for those statements to be suppressed in his upcoming trial. His lawyers say that Allen was in a state of psychosis due to the harsh conditions they say he was experiencing at Westville. Gas prices trickling down over the last week. 363 the average for unleaded in Indiana today, says Gas Buddy. The cheapest is in Jasper, around 321 at some stations. Indiana Pacers guard Tyrese Halliburton says he'd like to avoid the play-in tournament. You can avoid it. You want to be a top six seed, right? But I think that's pressure that we've put on ourselves all year. Like, we have been saying we want to be in the playoffs. We don't want to be in the play-in. The Pacers can do that with a win tonight on the road against Cleveland. I'm Kirk Darling on the level, on the go, and on WYBC.com. Hey, it's Hammer and Nigel for Window Nation. Now, you may hear the same offers from competing window companies. So why would you choose Window Nation over the rest? Window Nation is all about paying attention to detail. They measure their windows three times to ensure the proper fit. They have a 96% customer satisfaction rating, so they get the job done right the first time. And they are experienced. Each installer has averaged over 10 years of experience. You could have the best window in the world, but if it's not installed properly, it's not going to do you any good. Window Nation, they use top-of-the-line materials to ensure that your windows are installed perfectly the first time and they back everything with a lifetime warranty to go along with all these reasons there's also this amazing deal buy two windows get two for free and there's no limit zero interest or payments for 24 months you can't afford to miss this deal go with the experts go with window nation 866-90-NATION or visit windownation.com to schedule your free in-home estimate. You're listening to Rob Kendall. When we talk about sending money somewhere, Mm -hmm. we're talking about printing the money because we have no money. And Casey Daniels. My government would never lie to me, would they? On 93 WIPC. Well, it was a bad couple days if you're a fan of the Indy 500 because the open test... Didn't go down. That happens in April. It's the Kendall and Casey show. I'm Rob. Brad's here. Kev's here. All right, Brad, you are Mr. Indy 500. You love the race. I love the 500. And this is a big part of for people who are fans. Look, I kind of put the Indy 500 fans into buckets. Like there is there is uh, kind of I, I have three buckets of people who take interest in the Indy 500. There's people like me who are interested solely because you're a, a lifelong Hoosier, the pageantry, 
you know it's a big deal. You know it's the world's largest single-day sporting event. You love hearing back home again in Indiana. You are interested in that for that one week. You're interested in racing, and then you don't think a thing about it again until that time the next year. And that's fine. Those, and, those fans are welcome. And every year I'm listening on WIBC, and I'm participating in it, and I'm excited. And then as soon as the checkered flag drops, okay, well, then I guess uh, – I'll see you next year. Have you ever thought about becoming like the reporter from turn two or something? <laughs> They're going really fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Did you see that? And then, and then there's kind of what I call the passive race fan who is interested enough in racing. They know who the drivers are. They kind of keep a little bit of an eye on the sport and, and maybe they do that in part. So they'll be more educated about the Indy 500. And so they they kind of have a working knowledge of what's going on. And then there's Indy 500 super fan where their entire month of May is consumed by it. And that, that day is one of their favorite days of the year. And I kind of throw you into that, into that bucket because yes. you yeah, love I, the Indy 500. I, I tend to watch all the races and series and, I love that Peacock has extended coverage of practices and that sort of thing. So, yes, I, I would call myself a diehard. So, for Indy 500 super fan, of which, look, let's face it, in Indianapolis, there are many, many people who fall into that bucket. Oh, yeah. The open test and not having this, this is kind of a, a real letdown for guys like you. It, it is, although, I mean, as I mentioned, it's April. I mean, you cannot depend on getting a good day in April. It could have been 35 and snowing or... You know, it's just, it's rainy and cloudy a lot in April. So it, they can schedule it all they want, but, you know, at least I got a few laps in. I think the bigger thing will be if you're a Graham Ray Hall or a Callum Eilat or somebody who's potentially, at least last year, was iffy on making it into the race, you probably needed this time to see how your package is going to hold up. So now the open test is explained for the average person. The open test, it takes place in April. It is a chance for basically any person to get on the track, go around the track, try different things out. It is basically an opportunity for you to see if you are thinking about being in the Indy 500, what's working and what's not. Right. So, yeah, exactly. It, yeah, try out what the changes you made in the offseason. Are these going to work? Are these going to not work? If you're Kyle Larson, who's never run an open wheel car at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh, it turns out things worked out pretty well for him because he was at the top of the leaderboard. Okay, so two questions popped out of this. Obviously, that was kind of disappointing that people didn't get a chance to see that, but it really sparked two questions for me, and I thought you, I knew you were going to be in today, so I thought you would be the perfect person to ask both these things too. Number one, why has IndyCar in the last five or six years become so popular again? It sort of felt like as a kid growing up, and perspective when you're a kid is a little off, but it seemed like it was the biggest thing that happens in this state every single year, and the whole month was captivated by it. And then, I, and I get that much of it was brought on by the split, but even many, many years after the split, the Indy 500 almost felt like an afterthought. The race itself was big, but the lead-up wasn't big. It didn't seem like there was hype. And then really over the past five or six years, maybe seven years, it seems like it has once again, the Indy 500 has regained this prestige of mass not only Indiana-wide interest, not only nationwide interest, but really worldwide interest that the fervor I remember as a kid of the Indy 500 seems to be back again. It does seem to be back, uh, and this is just off the top of my head, but reasons I can see that. One, the race, racing is amazingly good, close, uh, their strategy that goes into it, they're running 60 miles an hour faster than a NASCAR does. So there's some of that thrill of danger. Let me let me ask you that because, again, as just a total amateur novice racing observer, isn't that why, part of why NASCAR became – because remember in the early 2000s, NASCAR was total king. Yep. The Brickyard was far more popular than the Indy 500. Isn't it? And and now we have seen the switch back because NASCAR has become much less competitive. It seems like the, – the, much of the interest in racing is based on how competitive will the race actually be. Correct. And, yeah, and NASCAR, which they've gone to a, a formula where pretty much every car is the same, um, but it, it makes it there's there's not the rivalries. There's and Because all the cars are the same, you don't see a lot of passing, which obviously makes it, it lends itself to, to viewing and it makes it exciting. Um, another thing that I think IndyCar has done – is they've had continuity of drivers mm -hmm. by and large. Their stars seem to have been there now for a while. And if you look pre-split, so this goes back 30 years ago, regardless of whether or not there was a split, IndyCar was going to have some hurdles to cross because all of their big stars were retired at about the same time. Yeah. So Emerson Fittipaldi retired, Rick Mears retired, um, Al Hunter Sr. retired, Gordon Johncock retired, um, 
Johnny Rutherford retired. All those guys left at about the same time. Bobby Rahal retired right after the split. So there was going to be a void and people, uh, drivers, that the casual fan recognized anyhow. And then the third thing that I think has really helped is their TV contract used to be split between NBC and ESPN. They're now consistently on the NBC platforms. They get a lot of the big NBC national coverage, so not a lot ends up on Peacock or USA. And I think it's just easier for the casual fan to know where it is to look for it. Well, let's face it. Like, the Indy 500 is the New York Yankees or the Boston Celtics or the Dallas Cowboys of racing. Like, you, people can hate the Cowboys. They hate the Yankees. The sport is better. In this case, hate the Lakers. The sport is better, though, when these when these heritage franchises, these marquee franchises, are doing well because there's more interest. There's more people paying attention. Maybe you watch because you hate. Maybe you watch because you love, but you're paying attention. Same thing with the Indy 500. We need, like Indiana needs, first of all, but that sport needs the Indy 500 to be the dominant thing that eclipses everything else, and it seems like they've gotten that again, and it has translated to a huge increase an interest in racing, kind of a auto, indie car racing across the board. It has. And some of it just, the, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is kind of our beach. It's the sign of spring. I mean, I remember as a younger man, I would go out there just for practice days. And I, you know, I, I cared about the cars, but I went out because I could have some sun. I could take a cooler of beer. You'd see hot women out there doing the exact same things <laughs> doing the unspeakable i remember one of the greatest things i me and some buddies actually every year my parents would sign off though i'm typically a rule follower yes one day each year my parents would sign me out of school on a friday and me and a couple buddies would go out to the speedway and watch the cars go around and i distinctly remember one day we're in the bleachers and i look about 10 rows behind us there's a teacher from my school there <laughs> and we each looked at each other and we had that acknowledgement of Neither one of us is going to tell on the other one. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so it, it didn't prompt this question for me because obviously May, IndyCar, Indy 500 dominates everything we consume in Indiana in May. Everything right. centers around that, whether it's the parade, the dinner, the race itself, the you know festivities leading up, bump day, qualifications, all those things. But there's also a, a marquee worldwide sport of an event that sporting event that has worldwide interest in May, and that is the Kentucky Derby. Right. And so I thought this would be an interesting exercise. Again, you're a, you're a total Indy 500 homer and cheerleader. I'm an Indy 500 homer from the standpoint of a, a lifelong Hoosier. But worldwide, if we take ourselves, if we try to do this little exercise and take ourselves out of the equation for a minute, what is the bigger deal? Is the bigger deal, and I'm talking about right now, is the bigger deal the Indy 500 or is the bigger deal the Kentucky Derby. Man, those are close. Um, because NBC covers both of them. And so, like, on Kentucky Derby Day, they will have a full day of racing. So, I think they start their coverage at 2 o'clock yeah. on the big NBC. And if you go to one of the sub-NBCs, I think you'll start get coverage in the morning. <laughs> They'll also cover the Oaks the day before. So, they make it a week long, you know, the casual better that doesn't know anything about these horses will throw money out there. I know the hardcore horse racing betters will avoid those races because they're like, yeah, all the, the lines get squirrely because right. there's people betting on stories. They don't really know what they're talking about with the horses. But I would say both of those events are probably equal in stature to each other for their communities. For I mean, what it means to Central Indiana. Um I, but if you were to take, let's take some guy, let's say, in Dubuque, Iowa, right, or, or Wheeling, West Virginia, and you said, what's the bigger, what's the bigger single day event, the Kentucky Derby or the Indy 500? What do you think the average person is saying? That's a good question. I think the Indy 500. Some I, of it's, it's on Memorial Day that. weekend. I tend to agree with you on that. It's got, I mean, the radio network is four or five hundred stations deep, and it yep. goes around the world. Um, you know, the bigger question, you said Dubuque, Iowa, or Wheeling, West Virginia. What if you go over to Europe? If you're in Belgium, yeah, and you ask, what is the bigger it's deal? It's totally Indy 500. Correct. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a, obviously a bigger venue. It's a bigger single-day event from a just sheer mass humanity standpoint. There is a worldwide interest in IndyCar, unlike the, the Kentucky Derby. Um, and let's face it, the Kentucky Derby is what, two minutes? 
Right. Yeah, the actual race itself. Where, where's the Indy 500? Three hours. Right. Give I mean, take. yeah. So yeah. I tend to agree with you that. And I'm trying to say this as someone taking a personal bias out of it. But I just saw what that I was so sad that the open test got kind of largely canceled because i know it's such a big deal for indycar people i thought that'd be a good, good little conversation for us to have and I, I would be very curious at robin kendall on twitter uh or you can call the hotline 317-684-8444 what do you think take away your indiana bias or homerism what do you think is the bigger single day event indy 500 or the kentucky derby now, now rob those who have listened to me on this show and I've, I've done it with casey in the past if there's been a french driver i will usually say his name Say Simon Pagano and then follow it with a ha ha ha. <laughs> but now we're running out of French drivers. I think we're down to one or none this year. But there's a ton of Swedes. Oh, so is that gonna be your new one? As a as a tribute to the Swedish chef, I think whatever one of the Swedes <laughs> names come up, we just say bork bork bork. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. When we come back, Kevin, our very fabulous producer, may have uncovered something about a very popular political ad that's running breaking news and it blew my mind this is all on kevin uh and kevin's earned his money today we'll we'll, we'll reveal what that is when we come back it's kennel casey show on 93 wibc mario andretti tony Kanan, and dario franchiti champions who have shared their stories at tales from the track this may wibc welcomes indianapolis 500 winner and five-time indy car champion scott dixon to share his stories from the greatest track in racing monday may 20th scott joins you and hammer and nigel for an evening of food fun and tales from the track brought to you by relay indiana tickets are available now at wipc.com Hey, honey, take a look at this. I thought Chinese businesses buying up Indiana farmland was illegal. Well, politician Chuck Goodrich voted for a special deal to let Chinese communist companies buy farmland. Oh, I guess that's why they're calling him China Chuck. Yeah, he also gave a sweetheart deal to another Chinese company to control Indiana land. Oh, he really earned that name, China Chuck. Worse, that Chinese company that Chuck Goodrich gave the deal to, President Trump banned it because it was a national security threat. Wow, I'm not voting for China Chuck Goodrich. He puts China first and Hoosiers last. Remind me, who's China Chuck Goodrich running against? It's Republican Victoria Sparts. Oh, I love Victoria Sparts. She's an America first conservative. She stands with President Trump to finish the wall and defend our borders. No, oh, Victoria's got my vote. I am Victoria Sparts, candidate for Congress, and I approve this message. Paid for by Victoria Sparts for Congress. Welcome to Tire Discounters. Oh, hiya, Phantom. Mike, you may be in big trouble with Chip Wood. Our owner? Free oil changes along with alignment? On any four-tire purchase. Michelin's up to 200 off? Yeah, sorry, Mike, but I'm telling. But the Wood family is behind all this. Oh, those rascals. But don't tell the accountants. Of course not. And what do they do again? Buy any set of four tires at Tire Discounters and get a free alignment and oil change. Make the Michelin's and save up to 200 more. See store for details. Attention seniors, you're invited to the grand opening of Centerwell Indy West. Centerwell offers primary care centered on seniors, so come celebrate on Thursday, April 18th at 5115 West Washington Street in Indianapolis from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Enjoy food, music, and more at this free community event. Plus, tour the new doctor's office and meet the care team. For details, call 317-754-7291 or visit meetcenterwellindiana.com. Do you find yourself stuck in a timeshare? Get the real facts about the timeshare industry and your options for cancellation. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has put together a free information guide that reveals the secrets the timeshare industry doesn't want you to know, including the five ways to get rid of your timeshare. Call now and get this timeshare information guide absolutely free. Call 800-919-3200. That's 800-919-3200. 800-919-3200. Go where the pros go. Drexel Interiors for Timberlake Kitchen and Bath Cabinets. Visit Drexel's new design center on 146th Street at River Road or on North Shadeland. Drexelin.com. It's the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. I can't believe you're a professional golfer. I think you should be working at the snack bar. You better relax, Bob. There is no way that you could have been as bad at hockey as you are at golf. All right, let's go. <laughs> like that old man you want a piece of me i don't want a piece of you i want the whole thing oh, <laughs> oh it's perfect it's perfect
perfect for this week. It's getting only Casey show. I'm Rob. Brad's in for Casey. Kev's here. So Kev. Oh, a little R. Dean Taylor there too as we fade out. Very nice, Kev. Yeah, a little Indiana little <laughs> thematic. Keep it a thematic right there. So uh Kev uncovered something uh earlier today and he told me, and then when he told me that I, I had him put the things together and it blew my mind because I think it's true. So the fifth congressional district, as we have said hotly contested. It's way more entertaining than the governor's race. Oh, for sure. Uh you got Goodrich, Chuck Goodrich calling uh Sparks basically a nut job. Yeah. Uh and by the way, you did interview for a job one time with Victoria Sparks. I did. You? So was yeah. it as bad as the ad? I, it is the <laughs> ad, I think. <laughs> I will just put it out there. So I went through the interview process. Yeah. I interviewed with her chief of staff twice. I then interviewed with the congresswoman. <laughs> she offered me a job, and then they ghosted me. <laughs> so Goodrich is running an ad basically saying she's a complete lunatic. Which there was, report, I think, a news report about yeah. that or something about. Yeah, it how, was in Politico, I think. Yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago. And 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 then she's running ads against him, calling him China Chuck. And I said, "All right, this is the way it should be. We're fighting to go to the U.S. Congress here. This isn't for some, you know, T-ball trophy. Let's let's take the gloves off. Let's let's go." And you know, it, the whole race had kind of been about these two getting all the publicity, and then out of nowhere. This guy, Raju Chinthala, is that, am I saying his name? Right. Uh, Close enough. He's a, by all accounts, he's from Carmel. He's a very successful businessman. He, and is very connected inside the kind of the establishment of the Republican, the party structure. He starts running ads, like kind of late to the game by. Yeah, he's trying to do that last minute surprise, but I'm I'm not sure that's going to work, but we'll see. Good luck to him. But he start, I mean, he's running a bevy of ads. He's. Full disclosure, running ads on this radio station. I think he's running them on others. And everybody's not even talking about him as a candidate. They're talking about his ad. They're unique. Because, yes, he's sort of gone with this, like, down homey Lee Greenwood. uh, You want to, it sounds like that ice cream. The Bluebell ice cream. The Bluebell ice cream. It's like the most uh, Americana thing. Yeah, the baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Can we hear just a little bit of that ad, Kev? Shades of red, white, and blue. Guarding dreams for all he believes in you. I just love that. Guarding dreams for all he believes in you. I have a question. Are we going to bill him for that, or is that a freebie? (laughs) Well, I think we're about to uncover something here, or Kev did. So... Uh, and everybody's talking about this. Like, you, Hammer and I were talking about that. He's, they're getting bombarded with it. We've gotten bombarded with it. People are like, I don't even know what this guy's views are or anything, but that ad is hilarious, and people are talking, which that's the purpose of the ad, right? Like, Right. They're all, talking about it, yes. All, all three of these candidates are running good ads. Uh, you got, we're talking about how Sp- Sparks is allegedly some sort of crazy person who's mean to her employees. You got... I don't know, China Chuck, you got this, this, this thing. And so we, we've been talking for weeks. I'm like, where have we heard that Raju ad <laughs> sounds so familiar? Like I've heard it before. And we were saying, it sounds like the bluebell ice cream ad. Is that it? Nah, it's not quite it. And then Kevin comes running in today and goes, I found it. I found where that <laughs> ad is from. Are you familiar with the show? Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I'm familiar, yes. Yeah, a very popular show. Is it yep. still on anymore? Yeah, I think it's still on. I think it's just on streaming services. It's this like 20 years now or something. This show has been on. It's got Danny DeVito in it, and there's these guys. They're all kind of wacky. They're it's like a it's like a bizarro version of Seinfeld. Yeah, it's like yeah. Seinfeld on crack. Yeah. is how they used to advertise. Exactly. It. it was on FX for years. They own this bar in Philadelphia, and they're all kind of crazy. One of the and it was a very, very popular show at one point. One of the more famous episodes, I think the name of the episode is actually Nightman, and and one of the characters uh, is writing an opera in his in his apartment. Charlie, yeah, Charlie, he's the illiterate musical genius. Yes. That, he's one of the members of the gang, and he writes this opera about this guy called the Nightman. And there's the, obviously they're pl- showing him putting this just totally whacked out thing together. And, and Kev, you actually said, I think Raju kind of is the nightman. 
Yeah, well, there's that song uh, "Day Man" at the end of the uh, the play, <laughs> and lyrically, it's pretty similar to Raju's. Even kind uh, of musically, it sounds yeah, a, little, a so little. It's a little similar. Sh- should we play it? Yeah, should we play? Play All right, it. here we go. Day Man. You're a master of karate and friendship for everyone. And the Raju <laughs> is the the Raju. So so what is the the, the, the day man? It's so you're you're the master of karate and friendship for everyone. Yeah, and Raju is uh, shades of red, white, and blue, guarding you. And we believe in you. Yeah, yeah guarding dreams. Guarding dreams, dreams. We believe in you. And we believe in you. So. Let's. I would need to hear these right next to each other because I think there is some merit. So, Kev, is it possible we could splice these two together to see if indeed Raju might might be the Nightman? Yeah, here we go. Raju, Raju, shades of red, white, and blue, guarding dreams for all. He believes in you. Raju is Dayman. I love this so much, and I love that you uncovered this. And this is why we've been begging these people in the governor's race to do something remotely interesting, because this is fun to talk about. This is gold. (laughs) Radio gold right here. Ah, That's good stuff, Kev. It's Kendall and Casey Show, 93 WIBC. On a map, the southern border is a 1,000 miles away. But that's not how it feels to my family. I grew up in a blue-collar home in Richmond. My dad was a factory worker. He was laid off twice. Not because the factory was doing poorly, but because it was cheaper to move those jobs across the border. I'm Jameson Carrier. Today, it's not what's leaving across the border that's devastating our families. It's what's coming in. And once again, it's personal. My wife and I lost our son Joey to fentanyl, a tragedy that's become far too common. To President Biden, secure the border, is just a talking point. But to our family, it's life and death. I'm Jameson Carrier. I'm a business owner, a native Hoosier, and a Trump Republican. And we can't wait another day to secure our border and put Americans first. I'm Jameson Carrier, and I approve this message. Jameson Carrier for Congress. Paid for by Carrier for Congress, Inc. Hey, Mom. Hi, honey. Mom, I'm glad you figured out the video call. What's all that noise? Is it your connection? No, just doing a few things to the house. Your room will soon be a fitness studio. My my room? What? Well, what's that noise? Is that your Wi-Fi? Oh, that. Your father's taken up the electric guitar. We're remodeling the basement for his jam sessions. Jam sessions? Mom, are you guys okay? That's a lot of changes. I'm just making some upgrades, and it's the home equity line of credit from Lake City Bank. The low fixed rate is helping us get things checked off our list. Oh, honey, gotta go. The hot tub is here. The the what? Mom. Mom? Use Lake City Bank's home equity line of credit for anything from remodels to guitar lessons. Learn more at lakecitybank.com. Call 888-522-2265 or visit a branch near you. Subject to credit approval and equal housing lender. Let Bill Estes put you behind the wheel of the powerhouse brands that define American toughness. Ford, Chevy, Ram, and GMC. Right now, get up to $10,000 off new 2023 Ford F-150 XLT models. Unleash the power of the road with Bill Estes Trucks. Find the location near you and see their inventory at BillEstesTrucks.com. All rebates and incentives included in final discount. Excludes tax, title, and other fees. Stock number BFB231021. Not all buyers will qualify. See dealer for details. Offer ends April 30th, 2024. 93 WIBC Mobile News. On the level. On the go. Water. 
Water everywhere. I'm Kurt Darling for Lake City Bank. Here's what's trending at 1130. Flooding on Indy roads is being triggered by creeks and streams. Ryan Hedrick reports. With not much more rain expected today, we should start to see the waters recede over the next day and a half. But then the problem is all of that will run off into some of the bigger rivers. Locally here, that'd be the White River. Out in western Indiana, that'd be the Wabash River. Which will put those rivers in flood stage by Saturday or Sunday, says Wish TV forecaster Marcus Bailey. Ryan Hedrick, 93 WIBC, Mobile News. President Biden for giving almost $7.5 billion in student loan debt today. The new plan, different than the one that he announced last week, will affect about 277,000 borrowers. I'm Kurt Darling, on the level, on the go, and on WIBC.com. Live Church, that is the place to be this Sunday. Uh, that's the place I'll be this Sunday. Uh, if you are looking for a new church home or even a first church home, can't recommend enough my friends at Life Church. You know, many WIBC listeners over the years have found a home at Life Church. And uh, I'll tell you what, I got a chance to meet some of them last night. Life Church is just so great. They're such a family, they're such a community, and they would love the opportunity this Sunday to meet and welcome you and your family. Life Church makes it easy for you. All campuses all across central Indiana, Noblesville, Fishers, Eagle Creek, and Pendleton. Incredible online services. Learn more about everything at lifechurchin.com. This year, your home improvement experts with B Window are partnering with Sullivan Hardware and Garden to help beautify your home. We're proud to partner with B Window, offering lifetime warranties, quality products, and exceptional customer service. Now offering 50% off all products, plus 20 months, no interest, no payments. And for a limited time, Sullivan Hardware and Garden will add a $500 gift card for all qualified projects completed with B. Join our partnerships. Call now or go to bwindow.com. Healthcare.gov is here for you when life happens. If you lost your health coverage because of turning 26, going off Medicaid, leaving your job, or moving, you could be eligible to enroll in new coverage now. And if you need to update your coverage because of marriage or having a baby, you could also be eligible. But don't wait. There's a limited time to enroll. Check your eligibility at healthcare.gov today. Life happens. Get covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Andy's leader in patio installation is now offering a new driveway package. Schedule a free estimate today at IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. That's IndieDecorativeConcrete.com. 50 years ago, Brown versus Board of Education outlawed segregated schools, promising the American dream to everyone. The dream of Oliver Brown was quality education for all children. But in many schools, children are being left behind. The responsibility of educating Indiana students rests on us all, from educators and administrators to parents and community leaders. Brown's dream of a quality education is the birthright of every Hoosier and a civil right guaranteed to us by the state of Indiana. If you feel your civil rights or those of your child have been neglected or that your child has been purposely denied access to the education resources, you have options. Call the Indiana Civil Rights Commission at 1-866-FAIR-FOR-YOU. That's 1-866-332-4748. Or visit our website at in.gov slash ICRC. This message is brought to you by the State of Indiana Civil Rights Commission. You're listening to the Kendall and Casey Show on 93 WIPC. OJ Simpson died owing the estates of, uh, or the families rather, of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson $100 million. Yeah, that's an incredible amount of money. You ever, you ever going to have a hundred million dollars, Rob? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, and I, look, you know, we talked about this, and I know Hammer obviously did a just a, a wonderful job of articulating how he felt yesterday. It amazes me that there even is a story about O.J. Simpson being a football player. I mean, or the the the, the movie star. I mean, the story is. I mean, I guess he was those things, but the story is. He's some guy who brutally murdered his ex-wife and some innocent guy who was bringing her back sunglasses. He's a complete lunatic, and he got away with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it, the first half of his life, he was a very positive, uplifting story. Came from the projects of San Francisco and, yeah, took USC to a national championship, I believe, and, a, uh, and he was a Heisman Trophy winner and, you know, great athlete for the Buffalo Bills, first first uh, man to ever rush for 2,000 yards in a season. 
And then, yeah, did the Naked Gun movies and a couple other movies. That was up until age, I think, 42. 42, he offs his ex-wife, and yeah, then and, he runs around the, saying he's looking for the killer. Here's the thing, though. It wasn't like even, not that it would make it any better, but it wasn't like, you know, you hear these stories of a guy who comes home and catches his wife with another man and in a fit of rage, you know, commits a heinous act and spends the rest of his days trying to make amends and regretful and whatever. O.J. Simpson, by all accounts, was a serial abuser. He was a serial manipulator. He was a horrible human being leading up to, I mean, he 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 terrified that woman. I mean, she spent she spent her life in fear of him, and nobody did anything about it. That's the crazy thing. There were so many instances where the police out there knew what he was, knew what he'd been accused of, and they let him just basically skadoodle a time and time again out of the the trap of justice, which might have prevented him from killing her. The benefits of celebrity, right? They- and, and so. Not only is he not, not that, I mean, he was a guy who terrified this woman for years. He commits this heinous act of murder, never, ever cops up to it, spends the remainder of his days flaunting the fact that he got off on it, torturing the families. I mean, poor uh, Ron Goldman. I mean, think about oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Had nothing to do with any of this. No, yeah, he was an innocent. Yeah, and, and, and the guy is just a complete scumbag. And uh, I think that's the greatest thing is that he kind of spent the remainder of his days figuring out how to not give money to these people who he clearly, I mean, he, he, he obviously tortured those families because he killed those people. Yeah. And I, I was just kind of surprised some of the networks, like the lead story was him being a football player or an actor. It's like, no, he's a double murderer. He's a complete scumbag. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's known for. In fact, uh, him or Nigel had uh, Greg Garrison on yesterday afternoon, and that was a really good listen because Greg Garrison – uh, covered that story, I think, for CBS News. Yeah, so. I, I hope they get everything that that estate had. Um, not that it makes it any better or is in any way going to bring them um, any sort of justice. I mean, even look, even if they'd have co- convicted him of murder, it wouldn't bring you justice because your kids are not coming. Your kids are not coming back. I mean, the, those OJ's kids that he had when Nicole grew up without, you know, a mother. I mean, it's just. But at least it would have been some semblance of he won't be living his life as a free person. And that's the great injustice in all of this is those two innocent people who one of them he spent years torturing, who he should have not been able to be around her to begin with. They they got nothing out of this. And he got to live his life as a as a free person for, for 30 years. However, that being said, the reality of this is the O.J. Simpson saga and the Bronco chase. It is. And we talked about this yesterday. It is one of the five or six most significant events of the 20th century because it's one of those things where everybody remembers exactly where they were. Right. So let me ask you, and you might have covered this yesterday, where were you when the Bronco chase went down? Totally. I was 10 years old. I I remember the entire evening. I was at the Brownsburg Little League Fields, and I can remember my dad and I getting home as fast as possible to turn on the television because people were giving you updates. This was pre-internet. People didn't have a cell phone or whatever, but people were giving you updates on what was going on and then sprinting home to watch the thing unfold in real in real time. And so whether you're 10 or you're, you're 40 or whatever you were, you remember. You Were you in college? I uh, was in college or right out of college. I do distinctly remember it was like a Friday or Saturday. Yeah. But early evening, and there was me and a buddy, and we were over at my mom's house getting ready to go out and party that weekend. And I believe that there was an NBA playoff yes, game. It was the, the finals. Final. That's right. The finals were Knicks happening. and the Rockets. And so I think we were going to watch that for a little bit. And all of a sudden, they started going back and forth between the finals and the OJ chase. And OJ chase won out. Yeah. It, it, there's a great documentary about this. ESPN did it in the 30 for 30 series. It's simply the date is the name of the documentary. But it's like June 17, 1994. And it's uh, all about the things. There were so many significant sporting things going on. And then OJ, obviously a sports star, while this is not sports related, was sort of at the epicenter of all of it. There are all these all these incredible, like the U.S. Open. It was Arnold Palmer's farewell at the U.S. Open. There was the NBA Finals. I think the NHL, the Stanley Cup Finals. Were, I mean, there was just this incredible sporting day, and it was obviously this weird sports sports kind of related thing at the epicenter of, of, of all of it. Um Okay, so uh, you have something for us. I, I typically when I come in, especially on Fridays, I bring gifts. Yes, you do. That's why we love having you in. So, well, thank you, thank uh, you. What is this? So uh, this is actually the exact same thing I brought you last time. Oh, I was how in exciting! On a Friday. So uh, these are Polliner 
one liter cans we'll that, that come with a on the one camera. liter stein. I love that. We love it's, the steins. Yes. So uh, uh, as Kevin was doing the heavy math of, if I drank this whole thing, could I still drive home? <laughs> <laughs> no, Kevin, wait till you get home. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I find these to be a nice little gift to I give away. That. And, uh, yeah. And it's, yeah. Cheers. You know, the great thing Thank about you. the Stein is it's just a gift. It's like the Jelly of the Month Club. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Like, every time now I use that Stein, I will think of you far more than if that beer had been consumed uh, and then, you know, right. then the you ether. throw away the can and there's nothing. Right. So so now you each have a pair of these steins. I love so that. you and your wife or Kev, you and a buddy can, you know, you pour beers in there and absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's such an efficient way to measure how much beer you should consume <laughs> yes. in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Very German. Oh my goodness! All right, so um, well, thank you, and you're, you're always welcome. you're always so good, and I love that you brought your master's koozie out today oh, for the uh, for the day. And we were commenting on this before the show. Everything the masters does is beautiful, like their yes. hats, the koozies, the shirts. It's a great color pattern. I don't know who conceived that all those years ago, but that green and yellow is outstanding. It is, and this is probably the the nicest quality koozie I've ever owned. It's stitched with with the masters and. Their logo on the front, I'll hold this up, and uh, yeah, got nice stitching on the side. It's kind of that neoprene material, but yeah, this is a fabulous koozie. All right, when we, when we come back, Brad and I are going to talk with Susan Beck with It's Your Mind, Your Manners segment, and we're going to talk about the rudest things you can do in someone else's home. This is going to be one of the best ones we've ever done. Kendall and Casey Show, 93 WIBC. Hammer and Nigel show. We start after the news at three and it's beer sample Friday. We're going to have a fun show. Nobody has more fun than we do. We'll talk to you this afternoon. A sleep divorce happens when bed partners sleep in different rooms because one of them has a snoring problem. It's nothing to be embarrassed about, but it is unfortunate, especially when there are simple non-surgical solutions that can put snoring problems to bed for good. I'm Dr. Mudden Candula with Advent, where our exclusive focus is the nose and throat, which is exactly where your snoring problem is coming from. If 20 years ago you told me I'd be helping relationships flourish again, I'd have laughed. But in many cases, that is the case. Because helping your bed partner stop snoring so the two of you can get back to sleeping together again can do just that. Go to adventnose.com today to schedule your appointment and learn more about our effective breathing triangle solutions. Because Advent knows when you breathe well, you live better. Breathe well with simple solutions. Breathe well with simple solutions. Adventnose.com. Results may vary. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes. And further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-357-6499. 800-357-6499. 800-357-6499. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Liberals have quit on America. We have a secure border. They'll deny it while they throw away the America we built together. I'm telling the American people that we're going to get control of inflation. It's no accident they let Indianapolis burn. Or why our border overflows. Jefferson Shreve, he fights back. He's conservative, pro-police, strong border. So he gets hit like this. Jefferson Shreve, Trump-style politics trashing our city. And what's more, Shreve takes no lobbyist money, owes no one, and can't be bought. So to them, Shreve is the enemy. Defend our country from the left, the elites, the ones who've been bought and sold. Defend it with a fighter who can't be bought. For law, 
order and a secure border. He's Jefferson Shreve for Congress. I'm Jefferson Shreve, and I approve this message. Paid for by Shreve for Congress. Welcome to Tire Discounters. Oh, hiya, Phantom. Mike, you may be in big trouble with Chip Wood. Our owner? Free oil changes along with alignment? On any four-tire purchase. Michelin's up to 200 off? Yeah, sorry, Mike, but I'm telling. But the Wood family is behind all this. Oh, those rascals. But don't tell the accountants. Of course not. And what do they do again? Buy any set of four tires at Tire Discounters and get a free alignment and oil change. Make the Michelin's and save up to 200 more. Tire See store for details. Sometimes I struggle to get to sleep. My body stopped for the day, but my mind is still running. So I take ZQuil. ZQuil, the world's number one sleep aid brand, has a range of non habit forming products to fit you and your family's needs. Invest in a great night's sleep for the best you tomorrow. I'm awake and ready to take on anything. Better days start with ZQuil nights. Explore our products at ZQuil.com. Use as directed, keep out of reach of children. Susan, looks like I'm losing, I'm losing my mind. All right, Brad, it is time to wrap up the work week. And as you know, Brad, on this program, we send people into the work week with the tools and decency necessary to be better members of society. I think we all need a dose of that. Uh, It's called Mind Your Manners. And uh, to do that, we bring in, well, we've, we've got an expert. Brad wouldn't rely on us to mind your manners. We have an expert. She's a former Miss Indiana. Her name is Susan Beckwith. With. And Brad, you're going to love, you're going to love this topic this week. Susan has searched the internet far and wide, and we're going to discuss the rudest things you can do in someone else's house. Susan, you have a maniacal mind to come up with this. I love this topic. <laughs> it is very appropriate. And uh, there were lots of things covered in this particular article and good reminders. So we're just going to have time to hit a few. Uh, but yes, lots of good reminders. I feel like I have done some of these myself, and then there have been some that have been done in my own home. <laughs> okay, so um, Susan kind of sent me a, a variety of options Brad I could pick from, and I went and I'm going to see if you back me up on this. The number one thing, and there were all sorts of things people could do that are rude in someone else's house. I said the number one thing from the list Susan sent me was snooping in someone else's house. Yes. Yes, it is. As someone that hosts a lot, absolutely. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Susan, tell us why it would be so rude if you were to go snooping in someone else's house. Well, you know, a lot of times if they put things away, they don't want you to see. You know, everybody has a junk drawer. But, you know, there are things that are just off limits. So you want to obviously be respectful of that and stick to the areas that you know that they have been intentional and have prepared for you in advance. So, and with that, you know, don't expect a tour. You know, obviously there are probably certain areas that they have dedicated for your visit, but uh, stick to those those designated spots. Brad, like I think about your house, where your house is basically an open book, and you let people kind of wander through, and then you have the fabulous speakeasy there at the top of the house. So I would think that would be the rudest thing you could do in your house, because clearly if it is not out, you don't want people to see it or mess with it. Exactly. There are there are some rooms that are just off limits, like... <laughs> Our bedroom. So what what people don't know is we cram all the junk into the bedroom when we're having company. So the rest of the house looks put together, but there's one room that's a disaster. Uh, Susan back with us, our guest. It's Mind Your Manners. We're talking about the rudest things you can do in somebody's house. All right, Susan, from the list you sent me, I thought this was number two, touching or moving things in the house. But I totally could see you walking into someone else's, someone else's house and going, everything's totally out of order. I would say that I totally wouldn't, but I am so guilty of this. Actually, I'm highly embarrassed about this situation now, but when Mike and I were first dating, it was my first visit ever to his parents' home in Michigan. We were I was like a freshman or sophomore in college, and I don't know if it was just my nervous energy, but I completely reorganized their refrigerator. Like, I... <laughs> don't know what came over me i think about my son brody now obviously he's only seven so we've got hopefully a couple more decades but i think if somebody i didn't know just came in and emptied my refrigerator and reorganized it i would just you know that would have really taken me aback so his parents are amazing and very gracious about it i think i was just so nervous it was like something i could focus on but yes that is not I would not advise touching or moving things in someone else's home. Did you throw away all the old leftovers? I don't remember that. That's 
that's been, you know, over 20 years ago, but I just, I don't know if it was like, I, I get, when I get nervous, I clean. So I think that that was a big part of it. Wait, 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 wait. So we got to back this up for a second. So you had just, this was not like uh, Mike and I are engaged. Micah and I are married. Mike and I have been together for many years. You had just, just kind of just started dating this guy. You go to his parents' house and your gut reaction is I'm going to clean out their fridge. Yes, I don't know. I think I was just so nervous, and I just started on it, and I was like, oh, goodness, now I have to finish. His dad was elated. <laughs> uh, his mom was so sweet. She really honestly is a gem. And so, But I look back, and I think I am so embarrassed about that whole story. <laughs> Uh, that is, uh, that is something else. I mean, we might need to like institutionalize you at some point and get to the bottom of what that was all about, because I have seen a lot of chicks do a lot of weird things in my house, but one of them was not clean out the refrigerator. Oh my word. I thought you would have my back, Rob, because I know that you also like things at a certain place and organization and have a little bit of OCD sometimes, but my own stuff, Susan, my own stuff in my own house. Like, I don't care what you do in yours. (laughs) <laughs> uh, Susan, back with this, our guest. It's the Mind Your Manners segment. Uh, Brad, today we are doing the rudest things you can do in someone else's house. And, okay, so, yes, go ahead. I, I have a question for you, Susan. Yes. Decorative soaps in a bathroom, decoration only or available for use? <laughs> like those because it kind of grosses me out because I feel like once they're all, you know, they've been used, I much prefer like a hand dispenser. So I usually say decorative. <laughs> so you're talking about the actual physical soaps, Brad. Like, like the what the little little bars that are in the shape of a flower or something. Usually you only see them in old people's Yeah, homes. absolutely. Do you have those? No, I don't. Okay, but, I was going to say. But I, for my own amusement, I've used them <laughs> in other people's homes. <laughs> really funny about you know hand towels that once they get really used and they're very saturated if you you know if you know what i'm talking about so i like to if i'm hosting guests they actually have something called guest napkins so i i like to use those so you're probably completely lost on whatever i'm talking about no i've (laughs) seen those no no here's what i know susan i am i am so glad you and i uh there's a world where we didn't end up together because you would have been a total enabler of all my ocd (laughs) bullcrap like you you are an enabler part of the problem here but our house would have been spick and span (laughs) (laughs) all right last one and i thought this one was uh Brad, I'll tell you what, you might have had this number one, because I know you're a man who likes to get to the point. You're a guy who likes to uh, do whatever we're here to do and then get out and get on with our lives. The last one, overstaying your welcome. Yes, absolutely. You know, a good sign is when the host starts turning off lights and music and you know the article it talked about like if they get in their pajamas you know that's a a telltale sign that it's time for you to uh to boogie so i appreciated that because i am not a late night person so i start to uh retire you know probably much earlier than micah he i'm more of a morning person so anyways yes overstaying your welcome is a good uh reminder for you to keep as your visiting and, and going to other people's homes. Brad, you have many parties at your house. Have you ever had somebody who has clearly overstayed their welcome? Oh, yes. We, we've gone to cleaning and doing other tasks. <laughs> um, yeah. I, so, sometimes I forget that when you invite people over, you give them a start time and an end time. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yes, yes Brad, that's perfect. I, see, to me, that is, the, that is. I mean, I don't know if that's number one, but maybe it is because time is maybe one of our most valuable resources. And the fact that it should be pretty obvious when somebody has reached a point of boredom or over you being in their premises that you can't get the me- get the memo and skadoodle on out the door. That is pretty egregious, Susan. Yeah, you have to go back to thinking about your host because they've been well preparing in advance before you get there. So they've probably been cleaning, preparing food. So it's already been a longer day for them. And while obviously they're excited for it to host you, you know, you want to be aware of all the effort they put in before you ever even got there. Brad, of the big three that we came up with for this segment, snooping, touching or moving things, or overstaying your welcome, which is the most egregious thing, rudest thing you can do in somebody else's house? Probably overstaying your welcome. I agree. Yeah, that's why we saved it for last. All right, Susan Beckwith, tell us about your fabulous website and Facebook page, Bell of the Midwest. 
Yeah, it's a great place to get in touch with me. It's also where you could submit your etiquette questions that potentially we'll cover on air. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you. And like Rob said, if you don't follow me already on Facebook and Instagram, you can find me at Bell of the Midwest. B-E-L-L-E of the Midwest dot com and on Facebook. Susan Beckwith, you're the best. Thank you. Have a great weekend. All right, Brad, that's going to do it for us today. You did a phenomenal job as always. Thanks, Rob. I enjoyed being here. Everybody have a great, safe, and happy weekend. Uh, Casey will be back Monday. Stick around. Tony Katz coming up next. It's Kendall Casey Show, 93 WIVC. Do you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt? Are high interest payments becoming too much to bear? Luckily, there's a way for consumers struggling with over $10,000 in credit card debt or personal loans to significantly reduce the amount they owe if they qualify. Qualifying for this debt relief program, which the credit card companies prefer to keep secret, will only require you to pay back a fraction of what you owe with one affordable monthly payment. You don't have to file bankruptcy or need a debt consolidation loan. Consumers can now take advantage of this financial debt relief during the current economic downturn and rising inflation. If you owe $10,000 or even $500,000 in credit card debt or personal loans, call the Debt Relief Advocates Helpline now for this free information and to see if you qualify. Call 800-303-1219. 800-303-1219. Again, that's 800-303-1219. Retirement doesn't have to be complicated. Are you sick of all the fancy charts and investment mumbo jumbo thrown at you to justify the Wall Street fees you're being charged? It's not the size of your nest egg that matters, but rather the income it can produce. Hi, I'm Mitch Lyons, best-selling author and star in a brand new Hollywood documentary called The Retirement Deception. In this film, we traveled over 20,000 miles interviewing real Americans who have retired successfully with a great lifestyle and peace of mind. They share their stories on how they get more retirement income with the same dollar saved, and the money is never at risk if the market crashes. That's right. If the market crashes 30%, you lose nothing. Even the super wealthy are shifting money into this new strategy because it increases their retirement income or can allow them to stop working years sooner. So if you are over 50 and want a bigger, better, stress-free retirement, call today to speak to